please be seated you know honestly while Jimmy was talking I just kept quiet and I was just thinking that if you believe the truth that he has shared and apply it you will never never go down it's true I think we should just, even if it's just a prayer again, and say, Lord, the truths I have heard, let me not just be emotionally excited. Let's, let's ask for help from God. They heard the word just like we did, but the word did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Thank you for understanding. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, the lifter up of my head. Sing it one more time. For thou, O oh Lord, Lord art a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But thou, O oh Lord, but thou, O oh Lord, art a shield. Hallelujah. I don't know if they were honored and recognized, but please let's celebrate Reverend Obandoma and his dear wife. The Lord bless you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. I announced it yesterday, but we'll still honor them again, Reverend Daniels and his dear wife, all the way from Enugu. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And um, Mukhtar is here. Happy. Where is your wife? Wife, where are you? Wave your hands. Look at tiny hands with a ring on it. Praise the Lord. Jimmy has shared the goal, really, this whole session is an attempt to not only inspire us. Oh, by the way, please let's celebrate those outside. Please let's celebrate those outside. There is a huge sacrifice. There are people seated everywhere. And in the sun, it is extremely inconveniencing. Um, but like we always teach, there is no sacrifice. Um, pay the price now, so you can pay any price tomorrow. There is a central price to pay now. Then you will be able to pay any price tomorrow. Praise the Lord. I'm just going to... Just a few things, really. Ejimi has, I mean, when I sat down and I listened to him, I said, this is more than enough to jumpstart anyone's life. You must always know the strategy God has allocated for a generation to prosper or for a generation to know him. There is a pathway. Your assignment is to find out what method are you using in this season. And some of the things that he shared here, uh, they are not opinions. Please understand this. It is, it is very, very powerful that you know this. The journey to wealth, and, and, and let me start. The journey to wealth is not just a journey to get money. It's a journey to redeem time. I want to start by talking a bit about time. Because if we do not understand the value of time, sorry I may be writing, you may not see it, but no problem. Time. This is a very, very mysterious concept. Time. That the only thing that God gives you is time. And that whatever you make out of that time, destiny is what you do with time. Are we together now? Yes. The Bible says to redeem the time 
because the days are evil one of the most effective ways to redeem the time is to be prosperous when you prosper is a very powerful strategy to redeem time the standard the standard um, challenge of failures and those who are weak and poor is that they never have access to their time no matter what you have if you lose time you don't have anything a dying man's request is not more money it's not more ideas it's not more education a dying man's request is more time because the moment you have time whatever it is that you desire can come take away a man's time and pour a pile of dollars on him it makes no sense a man that dies is a man who does not have any earthly time again the price and the size of the clothes and the coffin notwithstanding so all that we have been sharing here listen to me is so that by the grace of god i hope you know that it's a cost to spend your entire lifetime seeking money it's a cost it was never designed that way the time that god gave us there was an assignment connected to it are we together and that you must know the principles that will help you to gain time wealth can gain time because you can outsource other people's time you can have more than 24 hours when you are wealthy you have to understand this because like Ejimi was sharing there are many people who think this is just about you know having money and you know it's, it's wonderful but let me tell you this is deeper than that is deeper than just a desire to do well this is what you seek to redeem time it takes time to know God it takes time to serve God are we together it takes time to build anything that works this this the things you are hearing just like he told you most of the people that will share this will never share this free of charge impossible people have invested millions and millions to learn but you cannot give it free when you are hungry you know everybody is really a giver it's just that there is a level of commitment of your time that will not allow you to freely release if joseph's brothers met him in potiphar's house he will not forgive them forgiveness is easy when you are blessed that's why you hardly find wealthy people offended and these things are unnecessary time it takes time to build a good home it takes time to be an effective minister of the gospel you don't sit down. You ask any preacher you know. You don't sit down and just prepare a spirit-inspired sermon in one or two hours. Aside from the inspiration of the Almighty, you need to study. It takes time. It takes time to teach your children the way of the Lord. It takes time to build relationships. Remember, we spoke a bit about it. You want to transit from relationships as a connection to an investment. It takes time. When you take a flight to Lagos, you simply created a system of redeeming time. That whereas it would have taken you 12 hours or 13, hoping that nothing happened on the way. Are we together? If the car breaks down, why are you angry? Because something is happening to your time. Please listen. You have to get this. The whole fight is for this time. 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 There is no time in the grave. It takes time to live a life that is effective. Many people cannot afford certain things because of this. Time. What this phone 
does is it helps you redeem time. Whereas I would have written a letter and it would have taken two weeks to get to the U.S. with one dial in two minutes. Why do fast foods make a lot of money? They have found a way of redeeming time. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It's very, very important. Why is a typewriter obsolete? Because it did not sustain the ability to help men redeem time. So the journey to wealth, among many other things, was primarily designed to give you the environment and the atmosphere where time is of an advantage. I shared with you, the devil has a strategy. If you have wealth and have time, you have cheated life. And so you are at liberty to choose one. Time without wealth or wealth without time. What we are teaching you here, brothers and sisters, is more than abundance. You don't need this seminar to have some level of abundance. Some people can have a good job, maybe in an oil company, and have a cash flow that is reasonable, but they are not free. Financial freedom, you see that definition that Jimmy gave you, is important. The ability to have sufficient financial resources alongside the time, the energy, the peace of mind to be blessed by it. It takes time to live an impactful life. Are we together? Imagine that as we are teaching right now, simply because of the financial constraints, we begin to move around with a bowl all around and say, look, if you don't want the diesel to degen to off, or if you don't want us to be hungry tonight, please come around. It is powerful to get to a realm where you no longer think about money. You have to believe it exists. We have so factored it that we believe that until you think, oh, where will I get this? Where will this come from? That you get to a point where your only restraint is contentment and the voice of the Holy Spirit, not lack. There is such a place. And you may spend about an hour or so building your mind to believe. Because do you know for many people, and this has nothing to do with region. You hear people say, oh, this region like money. It's not true. Money is very necessary. Money is not everything. But in the area that only money can serve, nothing will replace it. The body of Jesus was hanging on the cross. No prayer could bring it down. No fasting could bring it down. No warfare could bring it down. It took prosperity to bring the world down to get to the grave. Joseph of Arimathea. When you are not blessed, there are many things that will go wrong in your life. Young people now have high blood pressure. 21, 22, 23. And they have BP. It's unnecessary. I've prayed to God and there is a goal and there is an architecture that God is helping us to build in this ministry to get to a point where everybody is more than blessed. As blessed as a nation, as an individual. So that you can have the time to serve the purposes of the kingdom. Are we together now? Many of you have good intentions. When you see the work of the Lord, you want to be part of it. But you are constrained. Many fights and quarrels. Do you know the top three reasons why marriages fail? I've taught it here in this house. Reason number one is finance. Reason number one, not demons, finance. So I, I, I want you to have a healthy respect. Now I know that there are people who have taught about finances and all they've done is just stimulating an obsession for acquisition of material things. Material things without a vision is a burden. It truly is a burden. Because any material thing you accumulate, there will have to be a system of maintenance. And sometimes it will be better off not having it. Are we blessed? I want to share with you what I will call the pathway to wealth. Just to buttress on what Ejimi has said. Many of the things that he said, I would just be repeating it. 
like a guide like a blueprint that can help you i taught the law of honor yesterday and it is my sincere prayer that god will help us to respect people that have results our generation is a very arrogant generation that does not respect results i never disregard a person and a people that i see results in i've had the privilege to meet extremely wealthy people and when i sit there i sit quietly no matter what they say whether i agree with it or not i must honor them because they have results that i don't have some of it praise the lord so it is important to listen it's important to understand another reason let me quickly say why we are teaching this is because we want to trust god to break this curse in africa where people only prosper when they are old in africa we don't do things fast speed is something that is not associated with africans if you buy a car and build a house build an organization build a successful ministry say in your 20s people look at you and say it's not correct are we together the moment they see a young man or young people doing extremely productive things an agitation begins to arise why should you have this car how old are you i'm 21 you must be a scammer you must be a... no 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 but when you are 65 and you are struggling to build a house they say, no problem the lord will provide jehovah jireh but the bible says a good man leaves an inheritance not for his children you are a failure if all you have is for your children according to scripture it must be transgenerational something that can last your children's children are we together now psalm 112 blessed is the man that feareth the lord listen carefully that delighted greatly in his commands he says his seed shall be mighty upon earth the generation of the upright shall be blessed then he says wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endures forever i will not spend my life chasing money it's a cause the price of my life like a jimmy shed i was so blessed is the blood of jesus christ and i will not reduce myself to become a slave to mammon notice jesus said something he says you cannot serve two masters so mammon is a master he never said god and satan the only way to serve god comfortably is for one of the masters to become your slave because two of them are masters and when you serve one the other master will fight you in ancient times two kings cannot submit in another place you have to behead one king and take the head into a city and then you gain territory you cannot allow money like that and then you are serving god and money is there as a master like cain and abel there will be a contention and so when you conquer financial resources the limitations that come with this system then you will have the time to serve God. By now I'm sure you have seen and you are learning again that there is a system for wealth and abundance. This is what I want you to know. It is not one day, one day go better. It's if God wants to bless me, he will bless me. Those statements are very demonic. Are we together? Praise the Lord. So there is a system. Um, get my teaching, Financial Dominion, The Wealthy Place, we have done all these preliminaries the things that have to do with you know tithe surrender your heart and all of that i won't go into it i want to focus on on the, the natural laws i think that's where the body of christ has a serious problem i've shared with you here that both spiritual laws and the natural or physical laws of wealth and abundance are all kingdom laws you are not at liberty to choose one and leave the other don't forget the revelation that Ejimi shared because sometimes we men of God we must take some responsibility 
that, that Levitical advantage that was given to us after this meeting now someone can come with an envelope and say apostle you bless me take but someone may not easily meet you like that are we together now so there must be a strategy is the reason why many people are becoming preachers because they found out that the theology we sell makes only preachers to prosper so if you are a non-preacher that privilege is not given to you don't forget that a preacher already has access to people who can see and appreciate his value the work has been done. And so they can honor and they can appreciate you. Every one of us can, should, and must prosper. If you don't prosper, let me be a bit harsh, forgive me. You are wicked. Poverty is wickedness. I'm being harsh deliberately. It's not an insult. I hate poverty for one reason. Because of what it does to the kingdom. If poverty did not affect the kingdom, I would not have any problem with it. All of these things. I've had the privilege to be with people at hospitals. And I've had the privilege to see people dying daily of sicknesses. Are we together now? Some parents or people even request and say, just leave me to die. Because... The amount of money that will be needed to save my life is unnecessary. The grave is full of many people who had gone before their time. Money killed them. So please make up your mind that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will get this thing once and for all. If you could get salvation, if you could get education, then you can get this finance. Ejimi was just teaching the basics to help you begin to jumpstart your life. But the assignment is more than just giving you cash flow. It's to give you stability. 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 Are we together now? It is very, very important. The laws... The physical laws and then the physical laws of wealth and abundance and then I'll tie it to a few principles on the pathway to wealth. There are three of them that I want to teach you. Number one, the law of value. Number one, the law of value. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16 that the gift of a man makes room for him and brings him before great people. I've, I've given this illustration again and again. L let me use it again. Please come, Sam. You people just in front, just come. Just come stand at my back. Everybody, please watch. Just stand facing the crowd. Compress yourselves together. Look at this. This is life and this is destiny. There is no space for you there. To believe that there is a space waiting for you is just an emotional way of encouraging you. It's a motivation. But the rude truth is that there is no space for you in life. This is the table of greatness. There is no vacancy and no vacuum for you. This is what the Bible says. The gift of a man will make room. Make room. There was no space for you. But God gave you something. That created space. There was no space for Facebook on earth. There was no space for Twitter. There was no space for anything. They created space. They pushed time. And added themselves. And the key is being valuable. Please write this. Thank you. Thank you guys. Value is a measure of your usefulness. Value is a measure of your usefulness to a person to a territory to a civilization value is a measure of your usefulness value is also a measure of your ability to provide solutions that are needed and useful not just solutions 
value is your ability to provide solutions please write that are needed and useful you can provide solutions that's what hb was trying to teach that you have to find out whether there is a demand for it are we together look up please so when we say you are valuable is an attempt to gauge the degree of your usefulness and the, the, the degree to which you can be desirable as far as the context of a civilization is concerned. If I say a Jimmy is valuable, listen, if I say Pastor Alpha is valuable, Sam is valuable, what I'm trying to say is that I have perceived their usability, their usefulness as far as our civilization is concerned are we together now whoever someone who sells pampas for instance that's a valuable person but with respect to me and my money and my patronage that value is useful but it's not needed i don't have anything to do with him so if i'm the only person on earth that person is valuable but you will still be poor are we together now Remember, I taught it here that there is a law. In business, we call it the law of compensation. And I'll state it for you. You know it, learn it. That our rewards in life will always be in exact ratio to three things. Number one, the demand for what you do. Number two, your ability to do what you do. Number three, the difficulty in replacing you. When you are easily replaceable, by any standard, your value is low. Are we together now? So it is very, very important to understand your value will make room for you. Let me tell you this. The greatest value you will ever have is within you, not outside you. Thank God for real estate thank god for every other thing but if every value i don't trust anything outside me the safest things are within me government can fight with you and collect your land and bully you and collect your land your shirt can tear your machine can spoil but the thing that is in you has come to stay it is true the most successful people are people who draw from within and create their possibilities without it's important so you must identify write it down please your inherent abilities number two you must also build skill i'm just rushing it skill is not inherent it is an outsourced trait. You have to learn it. Your inherent abilities are there, but your skill is something that you have to learn. Identify your potentials. Your inherent abilities. Identify and build and develop skill. Value. There is hope for your finances to the degree to which you are valuable and you recognize the value if you do not recognize the value you will never be able to rise the scripture Jimmy shared there was a vessel with oil in it and the woman was saying nothing except and the oil was hearing her I am in your house and every day you continue to pass me not knowing that the key to your tears is in that jar there is this treasure in earthen vessel god put value and put something in everybody you must identify it you must identify it value every value is spiritual it is true within you from the realm of the spirit and the goal is to draw it out the law of value everyone please say i am valuable listen if you are born again as a child of God, it is a double advantage. Because the presence of the Holy Spirit within you is real value. The Holy Spirit is the advantage. 
I've taught a little bit on true riches. That there are certain things that have real value in men. It is the capital that buys money. Wisdom. Understanding. The anointing. A transformed mind. This is real value. Are we together now? If you are not valuable or you do not identify the value, then there is no possibility of rising financially. Let me teach you something very quickly. The spiritual laws of wealth are responsible for the arrival of financial resources. The physical laws are responsible for the management and multiplication. The spiritual laws are not responsible for increase. They are responsible for the coming of financial resources. So if all you know are the spiritual laws, resources will keep coming. But you will never be transgenerational. The physical laws are responsible to create the management systems and the increase that comes to you. Are we together? I've taught you here that there is only one way money comes. If you touch your pocket or you check your bank account and you ever see physical money there, only two things brought it. One favor, two value. That's the only way money comes. There is no come. If you ever check and find out that there was no money or there's no money around, favor, value. It is the only official way money arrives. Never forget this. Favor, value. Favor, value. Favor, value. Are we blessed? So the law of value seeks to put in you an understanding that until you know and you are able to identify your potentials, there is no prospect of true wealth. Law number two. The law of productivity. Productivity is different from value. There is no need for productivity when you do not know you have value. But let me tell you this. Please look up. Just because you have identified your potentials, just because you are valuable, in that you are aware that you possess the skill to solve problems, it doesn't mean money will come automatically. Are we together? What is productivity? Productivity is refining your value and turning your value into products and services that are needed and useful. Until your value is refined and then turned into products and services that are needed and useful, you are not yet authorized for a reward. You are authorized for commendation but not for a reward. So there are many valuable people around, but they cannot be rewarded because they are not productive. Are we together? Is someone learning something this morning? The foundation of your productivity is development. The moment you begin to develop your value, you are transiting from just being valuable to being productive. And the zenith of your productivity is when you have packaged your value into products and services that are needed and useful. I'm wearing a shirt here. This was a gift that was graciously given to me. A gentleman, I was, I was going to minister somewhere and he just made shirts with different things that he believes that I like. Now, I hope you know it's not rocket science to learn how to make shirts like this. But that person who can make shirt will remain poor. The difference between him and the one who did this is productivity. Are we together? Now let me tell you this. You will still see these principles even in koinonia. I'm being fair and I'm being honest because many preachers don't know why they are prospering. They think they are prospering just because they are serving God. No. No. Your, your products immortalize your impact you are finite as a person you cannot be everywhere but your products give you that sense of omnipresence 
as we are standing right now doing this conference, there are thousands and millions of people around the world just knowing about Joshua Selman, listening to messages that are changing their lives. It's called productivity. It's not enough to be anointed. It's not enough to teach well. There has to be something that represents you. One of the principles of dominion is that your seed must rule for you to be in dominion. Are we together? So you are not productive if you have not given birth to something that represents you. There must be a representation of you in the market space. Otherwise you will remain poor. Please get this. They are very simple concepts. Many of you are blessed by what this gentleman is playing. And, but the problem is he's blessing you. And yet he's not increasing financially from it. You know why? Because with respect to our teaching, he's valuable. But he's not yet productive. You are productive when you can give something other than you that represents you. So I give myself to you and you can still go with me in my products. I am there with you in your house, although not there physically. If this guy now turns this, develops himself, imagine that he produces this, volume one, soaking worship. Are we together? Or he just writes something, songs from the throne. Volume 1. Now he's productive. Because after listening to him, the next question is, how can I take you along? Do I always have to see you to be blessed by you? Are you seeing that now? And he can tell you there is a product. This is my CD. Now it's true that the value is spiritual, but you will still pay for it. You will still pay for it. You carry that CD and someone else you are marketing free for him because you will not listen to it alone the moment you listen to it you are saving him the labor of having to pay for many people to listen to him again he's leveraging on your liking what he's doing and someone says where did you get this he said there's a young man called elijah and then like a jimmy shared immediately in our digital age the person will go online Many of you are deceived by the fact that I'm not online. I'm not online, but I'm online. You see, you have to know this. I may not be online as a person, but everything I would have done as a person is represented online. So don't sit down and fool yourself and, and stop yourself from establishing a presence that the world will know. This is very important. I have to be very fair and honest to you. Because I don't want you to just remain down. I remember one hotel that I went to. It was a new hotel. I was just trying it out. And then, when I went there, I was happy because I believed nobody, you know, nobody you know, would know me. I would have my time and have my space. And then I got in there and the day I was going to check out and leave, as soon as I came out, the receptionist was on her knees. She said, Apostle, sir. I said, hey this thing now what is all this one when she saw maybe the people who were coming to see me and people were talking immediately she went online and when she went online she tried to check the photo google images and she, ah he's the one who you see that if i type your name or your value what face comes out the face that comes out is the face that will get my money and if that face is not you, you will not get it. Are we together? This is very powerful. It's not enough to be valuable. You must be productive. And the internet has granted so much opportunities. Grace, come. Stand up. You see this lady? Many of you are just seeing... Some of you know her. She was from the school of ministry. This lady you see export agricultural products from Joss down to Lagos and all of that. My smoothies are made from her agricultural products. This lady you are seeing is a very powerful lady as she's standing like this. She has her farm. She packages her strawberry, her mulberry. She started by working in a coffee shop. 
for some people who were oppressing her and making life miserable. When you are in Laban's house, you will never be rewarded adequately. God is a God of portions. You start in Laban's house, but he must give you your portion. Anybody that seeks to keep you depending on him for life is not blessing you. It is why evil people prosper. It's why Jews prosper. Because when you are working with them, you know you are an apprentice. The goal is never to remain under subjugation financially. The system that keeps you depending on someone else's creativity and all of this for your daily bread is not the worst, but it's not the best either. You can start there, but the goal is that you will have your own portion. I just, I'm using this example. She came in from Joss yesterday. Yesterday, right? I knew she was around by what happened in my house. When I saw a carton of strawberries and all kinds of berries, I said, that's it. Hey, Jimmy just taught you now. You eat meat all your life. You eat your time and eat your life into the grave. Eating excessive meat is not enjoyment. It's a way of dying fast. Praise the Lord. This is the lady. Do you know she's not the person with the greatest farm in Jaws? I'm just giving you an instance. This lady. Every time I think of health and nutrition, I must think of her. Are we together now? Now, if, if I offend this lady, it's only a matter of days. I will remember what I stand to miss. Because I cannot farm. And I cannot do it. I will broker reconciliation fast. Are you getting what I'm saying now? She's productive. She's productive. She's productive. Many of you are saying, Ah, that's my idea. That's it. You remain valuable. But this is productivity. Praise. Are you here? Praise from Joss. Did she come? Your sister? She's coming. Come, okay, you come and stand for her. Run, 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 run and come. Quickly, run. Let me tell you a little story. I'm inspiring you. We are going to pray. You see this lady? We had a session for our children um, on Sunday. Powerful. And she runs something called Creative Kids. Very, very powerful platform that they have for children mentoring children and blessing them many of you have passion for children i saw some of your faces on facebook there but nobody has rewarded you because it has remained just at value now her younger sister this is this is where i want her younger sister came to zaria with a health product for all kinds of things detoxification and all of that because she's just known that look when you make money the next thing is to stay healthy so she wisely will just look for people around and she came with a product and then she met me and gave me the product in a jericho said this is for your health you're a man of god you're a preacher this would help you and i said oh interesting i've studied a little on wellness and all of that and when i took it i was so blessed when i got to joss I looked for that lady and I said, carry two and take to my parents. It's better than going to the hospital. Take it quickly and go and give my parents. Because the Bible says, he who does not work should not eat. It's a health advice. If you know you are not going to work fast for your health. And now my parents are retired and they are eating. So I said, please, quickly. Take this health product and go and give them. And when they gave them, my mom was so blessed. She was so impressed. This lady, her sister, when um, that was last month or so, I told her that I want all of this because I want to be taking it myself. She left just that morning and came to come and give me just, um, I think about four gallons of it. Beautifully packaged. Praise, praise what? Praise therapy. Praise therapy. Praise juice therapy. Are we together now? Let me tell you. It may not automatically make her a millionaire. 
but she will never sleep hungry. There is no spirit that will rise up and stop her from eating. Are we together? I'm just giving you an example of people scattered among us here. Let me surprise you. Emeka, stand up. Ladies and gentlemen, you see this guy? His company are the people that handle my designs in Lagos. I have a number of tailors. I have a number of tailors. I have four tailors in all. Most of the clothes that you see me wear, with the exception of a few, is his business that does it. Let me tell you the story of this gentleman. This gentleman was struggling and things were not going on well. And he listened to what message? Financial dominion. And when I spoke about value, he made up his mind to just pack up this for a while and reinvented himself, developed himself, and then he sold something that he knew I would not resist. He traveled from Lagos, brought it here to Zaria. When I started out in ministry, my tailors were in Zaria. I love them, but oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Imagine, I'm not, please don't feel bad if you are here and you are my teller. I love you and God, God will bless you. But I'm challenging you. Now listen very carefully. They remain my tailors until. Now notice, he was not the first to give me clothes. There were many other people. They were valuable but not productive. There was no way of seeing them again. They would give me beautiful clothes and I said, where is it? There's no way of reaching you. I want to order your clothes. Listen, let me tell you the truth. Not everyone is constrained with cost. There are people who have the liberty. And he came here. When he came, I prayed for him. You know, people give me all kinds of gifts and I'm grateful. And then in the night, hi, when God is on your side, Ba, he's on your side. I was sleeping at around one or two. True story. And the Holy Spirit told me, get up and try those clothes. <sighs> By this time, I now got up and I looked at it. I said, all these tailors that just sew this, a, a cloth, you don't know whether it's v-neck or round neck, you know. It's a, and so on and so forth. And then I took his cloth when I wore it. Uh, I said, this, this is calling me. This is a language that is calling me. I asked that they should look for him and bring him to my house the next day. Hmm. The king sent for Joseph and they brought him. There are, there are times, I want to tell you a few things. Because this gentleman now sows for top politicians in this country. One opportunity. Open doors. I don't know how many millions he makes in a month. Just because he left Lagos. And came for this conference. A wise person. Because no matter how far you have gone. Don't settle there. The grace that lifts you. Is also the grace that keeps you. Are you learning something here please? When he did that. Just a few adjustments. And I told him alright. And I tried to bless this gentleman. He refused. We were fighting. I said no no. I'm, I'm a giver. I'm also into your life. When he left, I said, this guy is so wise. And his life just changed. Completely. That's him today. I can point people here, but I'm just doing this deliberately to encourage you. Apostle, I am valuable. Thank you, but you will remain poor. You will only remain regarded, not rewarded. Are we together? It's very, very important. Please sit down. The law of productivity. 80 to 90 percent of the ministrations that I go for and the people that meet me do not know me as a person, but there is a product, the teaching. I remember those days. It was not popular at all to put messages on the internet. I remember the Holy Spirit told me, He said, Don't sell the messages, put them online. And I will take it to the nations. And you cannot imagine what God has done with these teachings. You are not productive 
until your product or your service proves you are. You may be valuable, but you must have a product. You may not have a physical office, but you can have an online presence. Do you have a physical office? Please stand up, darling. Do you have a physical office? She doesn't. But boy, you need to see what this lady is doing. You can see me marketing and somebody is now thinking, I say, ah, I'll be your Zaria distributor. I'll send, send everything here. Please sit down. The amount of chairs and canopies that we spend every week in Koinonia here. Last year, when the finance department prepared the end of year finance, and I saw how much just one department spent, I got angry. I said, Lord, why should this money go out like that? By Friday, over 80% of the hotels in this city are completely shut because of what is happening. Not to talk of miracle services. And there are many valuable people seated here. Right now, throughout this retreat, there are some of you here that are food vendors. You are the ones feeding people when they fast. Productivity. 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 There are things you are passionate about that may not bring you reward. Leave them first. Follow what gives you reward. Then use your passion for philanthropy when you are rich. You don't bless the poor by being one of them. Are we together? When I learned this, I saw the reason why many gifted people, many gifted people were not rewarded. I kept challenging the worship team. And I told them, I said, guys, let me tell you sincerely, and I submit to you, by the privilege of God's grace, we have some of the finest worshippers in this nation, in this place. It's true. It's true. You go around the body of Christ and you hear their worship songs. So many people have listened to their songs from Koinonia messages. But over 80% of them do not have a product. Imagine that they had something now. That in this conference we can say this is available. After the grace, you go to the back. Here is so 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 person CD. Are you seeing now? Millions of naira locked up in the realm of the spirit. The womb that will deliver that baby is called productivity. Praise the Lord. This is very important. I remember. When several people started calling and saying, um, Apostle, we want to send seeds from abroad. People want to send seeds and we didn't have a domicile. And it was something that could be easily done. I don't know how I got that careless that we could not. I mean, it, it didn't take more than 24 hours to just have domiciliary accounts. And for a, a while, those people will go through the rigor of looking for exchangers in Nigeria. That they may pay into the account and then all of And that rigor... One day, let me tell you what happened. What challenged us. You can see that there are people God are destined to bless us. But our not being productive by going a step further. To have dollar and pound and euro accounts. Short change prophecy. The oil stops flowing when there is no vessel. You have to make space for it. What happened was the manager of GT Bank. Somebody just got up like that and did a transfer. And they didn't know where to put it. The person just was and said, make sure it reaches Koinonia. I got a text from the manager. Was I think we went to minister somewhere. And he said, sir, this is it. We don't know where to put this money now. I said, open an account for us. Open domiciliary, pounds, door, everything. Open it. The moment that account was opened, me, myself, I became afraid. I said, my God. So this is what everybody has been waiting for. The day that that account was launched here, it was like a charm. You see, I'm being open to share these things with you. Imagine how many blessings are locked up just waiting for productivity. 
You think they don't like your song till the day the world hears it. Everybody say, I receive grace to be productive. Say, I receive grace. Don't go online when you are not ready. Now that I'm talking, some of you are ready to put nonsense online this night. Don't disgrace yourself. The world does not have that level of patience to tolerate mediocrity. So make sure that if you are going to do something, you know what you are doing. Quality and content. Word based and that it is worth lifting and blessing. Don't sit down with nothing. There is always something you can do. There are some of you here, by the grace of God and in the name of the Lord, with what God is doing in your life now, tomorrow, nobody will even talk, feeding hungry people, you will, you will build the equivalent of hotels, but just for the gospel, and say, this one is for the gospel. I heard about a gentleman who died in the mission field one time. And it pained me. I said, how much did it take to preserve this gentleman's life? Is the gospel a cause? Why should a man go and die because of a trivial something? Let me tell you this. What we are telling you is the future. It's not today. Those who have eyes to see can prepare for the future. Those who don't have eyes will be the victims of it. A day is coming. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. You're excelling in life financially. May no longer depend so much on jobs again, but on your productivity. Computers and artificial intelligence has come to stay. It is not going anywhere. And like Jimmy shared, every entrepreneur is out to cut cost. That means cutting any head that stands on the way of that cost. If 50 people receive 200,000 and one software managed by one man who can receive 1 million will solve the problem. I love you, but you are going. Simple. I remember when this down on me seriously. My blessed sister, I love her so much. She was working in one of the telecoms. And it wasn't like it was the best of conditions. Wonderful, very sincere, loving lady. And they just said they were downsizing. And with all my anointing, with all the grace, fellowship of the Holy Ghost, this is how they just pushed my sister out of the way. That thing pained me and I said, no, this is it. One day, you see, sometimes God wakes you up by just letting you, He can let life teach you a lesson that you will stand up and say, this is it. This, it will not repeat itself again. When I saw that thing, my heart broke. I said, how many people are on their way? Imagine that a husband and wife are in the same place and they love God and they have three or four or five children and suddenly both of them are downsized. In one day, their whole lives return to shambles. But there are people rising that will feed kings because even the king is fed from the field. So no one is immune. When you have value, kings must eat from you. It says that Gentiles come to your light. Yes. I studied Billy Graham a lot because he was not the only evangelist on earth. But what gave him access to kings? Every president, regardless of your spiritual conviction, must honor Billy Graham. And I said, Lord, grant me the grace, not just to minister the word, but to speak to kings. You want to speak to kings, you must learn the protocol of kings. Are we together? Let me surprise you. Daddy, sir, please don't be offended. Would you rise, sir? Yes. Let's celebrate our father. Now, this, our father here, is the national coordinator of CEM. Am I right, sir? That man. This man decided to make up his mind, take his reputation, keep it aside, and come for the school of ministry and dedicate six months. The national coordinator of CEM. I'm ready to invent my life. I'm, I'm showing you people who are defying these things to say, at my age, nobody taught me. But even now, oh Abraham, even now, there can still be a way out. Are we together? 
I can point people again and again who have already seen the future and have known that if I do not own the future by subscribing to what God is doing, then I may have to sell my children. In the Bible, the track record of eating children and destroying their destinies has always been there. Two women, they ate one child, they were about to eat another child. Hunger always takes Israel to Egypt. Very, very important. Everybody say productivity. Let me give us the last key. Thank you for your patience. The law of exchange. Please sit down, sir. The law of exchange. So I've taught you the law of value. Identifying your usefulness, your gift, your skill. Number two, productivity. Developing and refining those abilities into products and services that are needed and useful. And then the law of exchange. In business, we call it the art of selling. The ability to compel people to need you. The ability to persuade the attention and the resources of people. The law of exchange. You see, it is at the point of exchange, that transaction, that resources come to you. So come, Sam. Sam is valuable. Bring, bring your notebook. Sam is valuable. Sam is productive. He has a product. But he's still poor. This is Sam's money with me. God has already told him, I've released your wealth. And the wealth is on earth. The law of value has been kept. The law of productivity has been honored. But the law of exchange is why he's still poor. Although productive. Are we together now? He must know how to reach me so that I will collect his product in exchange for this. This was the Lord that brought Jesus to the earth. It was not enough for the Father to intend. It was not enough for the Son to be willing. There had to be a system of conversion where the Word became flesh. And then when that happened, even at Gethsemane, there had to be a system of exchange so that he would become the cause, the second Adam. He was not born the cause. And exchange made that happen. Listen to me. If you violate this law, you will remain shockingly poor. You don't have to sell to exchange. You just have to get the people. When I say sell, I mean that you don't have to put a price. Otherwise, people like us, who don't sell anything, for instance, you understand? I cannot come for a meeting and then I tell you, you must give me one million. You must give me 500,000. In that regard, I am not selling, but I am selling. You see that now? It is very true. I will be a wicked person to not teach you this. Because that is the final system of arrival of the resources. It is at the point of exchange that the millionaires are made. It is at the point of exchange that the resources reach you. Many of us have taken it a step further to be productive. But you have not been able to get those who need it to come for it. And it is until they come to your light that they come with their gift. It was when the queen of Sheba heard about what Solomon was doing. Then she came with gifts. Solomon didn't sell anything but he sold something. He sold excellence. Are we together? The same thing that I teach today as a man of God. That sometimes I taught years ago. And then while I'm struggling to get a bike, the people that invited me will come and stand close to me like a bride. And just bring out 1,000 and say, sorry sir, I hope we were really blessed. As if you are bribing somebody in a federal government job. The same thing I'm teaching today. And someone can bring what is the dream of someone else. 
and bring it. Why? Because of the law of exchange. When God was telling me to put these messages online and let it go free, it looked like, God, what are you saying? It was not about it. He was saying, I want the ears of those who need this anointing. I want the ears of the generation that needs to hear you, to hear you. Until this thing works, hear ye him. Hear ye him. Patronize ye her. That is when wealth begins to come. Where's case strings? It's not here. He didn't come this morning. K Strings was anointed. Great guy. Productive. But one person, Nathaniel Bassi, got to hear his song and called him and said he should come. And God has helped that young boy now. Many of these people you see seated right now have their various albums and all of that in, in process now. Very soon it will come out. And before you know it, you may not even be seeing them on Friday again. Ah, where is this one? This one is in Brazil. And he said, I know them. No, 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 no. Are we together? Until your world knows you are there and they know why you are there, it is an error for them to come to you. What for? They have to know you are there and they have to know why you are there. By the grace of God, Many people continue to come here because by His Spirit, He has given us the grace to brand our impact. We are not only impactful, the impact has been branded. The name Koinonia is not a revelation, it's a brand. It's a brand. It's a brand. When you mention Apostle Joshua Selman, you don't think relationship and marriage. No. I know a lot about finance, but you don't even think finance. You brand your impact. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The art of selling. You don't always persuade men by talking to them. You persuade men by talking to their needs. Talking to their hearts. Talking to their hunger. There are times they don't want to hear, but their needs will answer for you. And say, don't mind him, we are here. We need you. How can you ever... Be poor and lack. When you rise to a point where you are so needed, you are so useful. Do you know how many people will be blessed when you learn this? I've given you my story. That people go to our family house looking for my mother and say, wow, this is Apostle's mom. Mommy, we brought this for you. Thank you for giving birth to this son. I believe my mother's assignment was to give birth to me. Who will be proud that you came? I submit to you, my brothers and my sisters, I say it with all humility and I say it in the name of the Lord. Part of the reasons why we are effective in the pursuit of the things of God is because by His grace, He has given a measure of rest in the pursuit of this mammon. You will never serve God chasing money. I don't go to minister today because I'm looking for money from the place. Otherwise, I will choose where to go to and reject other places. There are campuses that will invite you. They barely even have the money for your flight. But you know that souls need to be saved there. But if money becomes your governor, it will lead you outside the will of God. There are people like Ejimi Shed who have no business getting married to certain unbelievers. But the reality of the needs will compel them to say, no problem, we will manage and their spiritual lives go down. The law of value, the law of productivity, then the law of exchange. And God has put the internet as a blessing to make that happen. In one day, one day, God has given us a measure of influence to assist us. This lady now that I've spoken to, you think it's a joke. Everywhere you hear this message around the world, you will hear her. That's it. One word. It doesn't take so much to endorse you. But favor is when preparedness meets opportunity. Opportunity. It's not very difficult for God to lift you. 
it is not very difficult for God to announce you. We're in a season where God is announcing people and blessing people and helping people and honoring people. Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, if you pay attention to the things that have been taught this morning, they may look like basics, but they are keys that anybody can pick right where you are. You can tell yourself, Lord, right where I am. I've seen poverty and struggle. I've seen divorce in my family because of this. And my life cannot continue like this. When you make up your mind like the prodigal son, I will arise. It's within your power. Out of the ashes of my dying today, I see the breaking of a brand new day in which the name of the Lord alone is glorified. I see the breaking of a brand new day out of the ashes of my dying today. I see the breaking of a brand new day in which the name of the Lord alone is glorified. I see the breaking of a brand I may not have the time to talk about the other things, but I think this is good. This is good enough for us to pray. Every one of us here needs to engage one or more of these laws. And you will wave poverty goodbye and it will wave you back and say, go. Sitting down to superstitiously wait for a breakthrough is deception. You will sit there forever and your children will join you again and again. Whether you are a preacher whether you had the privilege to be educated or not, there is an opportunity for your rising. That from these ashes, from all of this that you are doing, you can arise. Some of you are yet to discover that value. You are not praying in tongues for nothing. The Holy Spirit is not a cause. It's not just something that came to make you a Pentecostal. The Holy Spirit is the advantage that treasure that is in earthen vessel put by God to turn your life around. To turn everything around. To turn your ministry around. Listen, men may laugh at you. Men may be sarcastic, but it's only for a while. You can't laugh at results for too long. Your foolishness will become obvious. It's a retreat. But we also need to be empowered. Oh God, when will you help me? The day you engage this. The day you bring something in my hands. For as long as there was five loaves and two fish, it was alright to feed 5,000 people. The multiplication is always possible when you bring something. He didn't bring flour and, and uh, raw fish. No, the young lad had processed flour, bread. And fish that was already roasted. So it was easy to bless it. If you bring raw fish, God will teach you how to cook it. He won't call anybody to buy it. But when you present it, you can stand and say, My world, come and see like a trophy what His Majesty has done upon my life. You are a man of God here. Let me tell you, ministry is not the reason to be poor. And it doesn't have to be by manipulation and all of that. You can stay with the Spirit. While you are praying, you are increasing in wealth. You are not praying in tongues just so that your capacity is open. While you are studying, when others are sleeping and you are studying, you are making... This is... Remember your children. When you are tired, you remember. I, my father could not make this sacrifice, but I'm making this sacrifice for the sake of my children and my children's children. And while you are praying, Shakatos kabaratos yata, the anointing of the Spirit is rising. Until the day, you see, you are valuable. Now you have become productive. You have something real. Then God will create the platform. He will put all your destiny helpers in front of you and give you the mic and say, it's your season of appearance. One sermon and what God will do in that meeting 
you will never have rest again. Let us begin to come from all over the world. Listen, let me tell you this. By the grace of God, when you have worked on yourself and you can say in all fairness that what I have will not bring me shame, don't be afraid of letting the world know you are there. It is not, it is not pride to let the world know you are there. Jesus said, let's go to other cities. They need to know that I came, the Son of God. Today, by God's grace, as God has helped us, we are not ashamed to tell the world that we respect and we honor, but never to the point of intimidation, because such as we have, there is something God has put. Is someone ready to pray? We are going to spend a few minutes to cry passionately to the God of heaven who is the lifter of men. Prosperity is giving evidence to the blessing. That the blessing is upon your life and you do not frustrate the grace of God. You give evidence. You engage these principles. Lift up your voice and begin to pray in the spirit. Outside, pray. You are paying the price outside. But don't be ashamed of your sacrifice. You pray. Hallelujah. Listen. Now unto him who is able to do. So we are not doubting his ability. Don't ever ask God, can you do it? That's not the language of faith. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly far above all we ask or think. Listen. According to the power, not that lives, that walks. The fullness of the Godhead lives in you, but it's the dimension that walks that is released to be a blessing. According to the power that walketh in us. Koinonia, let me tell you this. If you listen to this that you are taught today, believe me, it will not take long. You know what to do now. You are not sitting down saying, Lord, what do I do? You know what to do. If you are not valuable, you stay with the Spirit of God. Like Ejimi has shared, you find out, Lord, what is it? What, wh where is that rod in my hand? Wherewith I will do signs and wonders. And God will tell you. There are many things that you have, but one thing is needful. One thing, one thing that God will anoint. And you go and develop yourself. If it means to take courses and take certifications for the purpose of credibility, do it. Do it. Hallelujah. Do it. It's powerful. Our friend TK is here. TK read chemical engineering, first class chemical engineering. But because of his passion, he went to Lagos Business School to reinvent himself again. Reinvent himself again. Don't say I studied this and that. If you don't need it, relearn. Relearn. Sit down. Go to the internet and relearn. Reschool yourself. You have to learn this. Ejimi was the best student in his, in his class. Industrial design. But he looked at it. I knew from day one that other thing was just to finish it fast. And he had to relearn himself because he, had, he was business all over from head to toe. There are many people who sit down and continue to say, my course is not valuable. Make yourself valuable. There is no such thing as being educated again. You are either learning or you are out. I'm educated is just a philosophical way of encouraging yourself. Reinvent yourself. Stay with the Spirit of God. You are a man of God. Don't be lazy. You are not talking to children. Ministry now is not when you just come and dump anything on people. As you are talking, they are checking your statistics on the internet. 
as you are talking, they are looking at what you are saying. If you want to teach kings, you must learn the kings are not poor people. When everybody was coming to Solomon, the queen of Sheba did not come. Kings don't come to your light. They come to the brightness of your rising. Someone lift your voice and cry and say, Lord, enough is enough. I challenge myself in this business session. It's time to rest. Lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, open my eyes to see that with every gift you have given me, which one of them will own the future? Lift your voice and pray. Show me. When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. He will take that which is of me and he will give it to you. He will show you things to come. What may be relevant today may not be relevant in 10 years. Lord, open my eyes. You have given me so many things. Which of them owns the future? So I don't waste my time shadow boxing on things that may never hold relevance. Shabarakatabako selebala Kaprandakatabaru seketebalatosh Enkratabaran suzia hashadabalakata Pray, Koinonia. The Lord is lifting your life to make you a praise to the nations. Shiva Shalapo Zasikata. Wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endures forever. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, whatever price I need to pay to be the best, you have to destroy mediocrity. Mediocrity is a terrible spirit. You are neither here nor there. I like you to pray. Grace to be exceptional. What have you given me, oh God? The grace to sharpen it. If the axe head be blunt, it says. Then much labor, much effort is required. But wisdom is profitable to direct. Grace to be competent. Grace to be productive. Grace to be exceptional. Someone is praying. Someone is praying your way into a realm of strange abundance. There's no space for mediocres in today's world. There is no space for average a little here, a little there. It will not hold water. Shebarakatabosh. Excellence in ministry. Excellence in business. Excellence in career. Excellence in the works of my hands. Oh, I give myself no rest till I become a reference. Challenge yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you get to the point of productivity, 
then you are ready to cry for his assistance. Ah! Because my brothers and my sisters, the next prayer we are about to pray, you see, when God is ready to lift you, he will take you where your helpers are. Remember, all blessings come from God through men to you. So God will position men, position people, and then he will now bring you. That's going to be your prayer. Father, the kings of my industry, the gatekeepers, I pray that you will strategically place me in the midst of them. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. That he will put you in the midst of the men and women that have both the recognition and the fortitude for reward. I call forth my helpers, the lifters, the announcers, in the name of Jesus. They are positioned around me. They recognize and discern the grace of God upon my life. Hallelujah. Listen. The realm of wealth and greatness, permit me to use the word, is like a secret cult. You have to be ushered by someone who is there. The same way you can't anoint yourself. There must be a hand that holds you and says, come up. Come up. You may be ready, but standing there. Joseph was ready. Pharaoh was there, but the connector was missing. Listen, he told the wine presser, if you get to the king, speak for me. There are times that you don't have a voice at the gate yet. You will need the favor of the person who is already at the gates. It is your works that speak for you at the gate. Sometimes you may not have your voice. Who is already at the gate of my destiny? Lord, grant grace that they speak for me. Grant grace that they endorse what you are doing in my life. Grant grace. May they hear my song. May they hear my sermon. May they see my product. May they see my work as a lecturer. May they see my presentation as a career person. Lord, may they hear about me. Let it be noised abroad that I am here. My destiny, hear me. I am here. Do not bypass me. Hallelujah. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Hallelujah. Success systems, part one. Success systems, part one. Success Systems Part 1 The goal of this series is twofold. Number one, to reveal to us the requirements. The requirements that must be satisfied for you to experience lasting kingdom success. Number two, to unveil to you the laws, the principles, 
the secrets, the mysteries that are responsible for commanding success from God's standpoint. It's an attempt to help our lives bear fruit. It's an attempt to make and help contribute to making our lives meaningful. It's an attempt to improving the quality of our lives and to help us um, in our quest to become effective spiritual people effective kingdom ambassadors it's an attempt to create balance to every area of our lives so that we are not unfruitful in any aspect so this is a very powerful series we're starting off with part one and um, I pray that God will help us two scriptures very quickly and then we'll take the course content second second peter chapter 1 verse 8 please media we need to work with us very very fast tonight media help us second peter 1 verse 8 and then we'll look at genesis 39 verse 2 to 6 it says for if these things be in you what things certain informations certain traits for if these things be in you and abound are lavish it says they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in this context it says in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ but it applies to every area of life if these things are bound in you and they are lavish they will produce an effect the effect is that they can stop barrenness and unfruitfulness from your life it didn't say if these things be around you if these things be in you if you believe them and buy them then it says you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful genesis 39 four verses two to six genesis 39 and the lord was with joseph and he was a prosperous man and he was in the house of his master the egyptian we're reading to verse six and his master saw that the lord was with him and that the lord did what made all that he did to prosper in his hand and joseph found favor or grace in his sight and he served him and he made him overseer over his house and all that he had put in his hands verse 5 and it came to pass from that time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had that the lord blessed the egyptian's house for joseph's sake and the blessing of the lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field the last verse and he left all that he had in joseph's hand everybody say trust and he knew not what and he knew not what he had save the bread which he did eat and joseph was a goodly person and well favored help us tonight in the name of jesus christ write down the things we are going to be considering in this series please write those online follow us or at least you'll be patient to allow the media lead you there are a few things that we are going to be looking at and wherever we can stop tonight we'll stop and pray but please i want to take my time and teach you this i want you to understand it and i trust that god will take advantage of this series to bless and lift us in jesus name the first thing we'll be considering tonight is the reality of failure how real is failure is it a mirage or is it real number two we are going to look at the concept of success in the kingdom. Number two, we are going to look at the concept of success in the kingdom. What is God's idea of a successful person? The concept of success in the kingdom. Number three, we are going to look at the concept of laws and principles. The concept of laws and principles. Can I continue? Number four, definition of terminologies. There's too much confusion. So we need to clarify terminologies as it regards 
or as it relates to kingdom success definition of terminologies and then number four number five thank you the laws of success the laws of success we're going to be examining the laws and then number six will end with a very strong impartation and trust God to carry something that will activate these dimensions in our lives praise the Lord if you believe it say amen, amen. now statistically speaking statistically speaking five out of every hundred people ever become successful in their lifetime five percent out of every hundred people that you see only about five percent of them ever become successful whether from a human standpoint in fact when you say from a divine standpoint the statistic reduces again very few people a young man gets up living his life bubbling with joy hoping he will be successful and you see the the excitement of life on his face but that same young man give him 70 80 years down the line is a testimony of pain a testimony of regrets a testimony of sadness lost opportunities mishandled laws a life of fatal failure most people die in pain most people die advising their children don't be like me most people die apologizing to their generation because they finally are forced to swallow the bitter pill and admit they did not make it pastors business people parents young people the same challenge is eating up our society the correct definition of success and a life that will become a template and a model enough worthy of emulation as far as kingdom success is concerned so it's, it's a big issue it's a tragedy that about five percent can you imagine that out of every hundred people whether they are church goers fasting giants prayer warriors five percent of them eventually will become successful whether in ministry whether in business in fact um it, it is said that over 70 to 80 percent of churches that start up end by the end of that year they can't continue no members no resources no wisdom spiritual forces that they've not been able to surmount and other auxiliary factors that add to enforce the failures of people write this down failure is real failure is real second point failure will happen to you if you allow it i think it's a revelation many of us need to come to terms with we have this inheritance mindset that by default just because you have a nice name or you think you are too kind to fail there's no such reality in the school of success let me tell you everybody is a potential candidate for failure until you exempt yourself is a reality that is upon us by default <laughs> a lot of spiritual people will say i reject it you better listen quietly to what i'm saying i am a very spiritual person i have learned the foolishness the foolishness of exaggerating truth beyond the jurisdiction of their relevance is what causes failure as a side effect please listen carefully i love you too much to deceive you i love you too much to mislead you and one of the graces god has given us in this ministry is capacity for balance so anything you hear that you do not understand just be patient by god's grace i'm a good builder every house is built by some man he says but god is the builder of all and so we will not build a house that is lopsided we'll build a house that stands solid on the rock no matter what shakes it it remains there say amen
Failure is real, brothers and sisters. There are pastors who are failures, regardless of their spirituality. There are churches that are failing and have failed. Some of us here seated right now is an uncomfortable truth, but right now, if you will admit, you know you are failing. Woefully for many of us. Are we together now? Yes. Disappointed expectations. And it's important that we find out God's system to bail ourselves out and do so very, very fast. So failure is real. Failure is very real. We see it every day. You see failure in the face of angry people who walk upon our streets. You see failure in the face of failed marriages. A man and a woman who love themselves and have an agreement to live happily and right now you see someone age 24 and he tells you i have divorced how long did you marry six months one year how about failed businesses how about failed career pathways how about failed ministries how about disappointed expectations i should enter a particular dimension of the anointing by now and after donkey years you are still there wallowing around in mediocrity failure is real it lives among us we see it in the faces of our dear loved ones we see it in the frustration of our parents you watch them and you know they are frustrated some of them are too arrogant to admit it so they act as though they are still in control but many have been forced, painfully so, to admit that there is something they are missing. Many people have been forced, amplified by the recession, to swallow their pride and admit I'm not getting something right. Nobody becomes a success by accident. Nobody becomes a success by chance by luck yesterday i was ministering at a crusade and i gave an instance i think I've, I've given that instance here and i want to repeat that example watch this if i make a mistake and forget that there is a step down and then i sleep and i march will gravity forgive me and say no i know you were joking you were not serious next time be serious no gravity does not have in its configuration the assumption that men make mistake every time i violate that law of gravity i pay for it and i do so immediately and sometimes i may not have a second chance again this is how success is and this is how failure is listen many well-intentioned people many christians born again and filled with the holy spirit have indoctrinated themselves into believing that just because of that status their life should succeed automatically no being a christian gives you the potential and the access for success there is a difference between access and delivery access means potentials delivery means experience listen very carefully all that jesus christ did for us on the cross gives us access but there are systems built in the dealings of god with men that converts access to delivery where you are now a a manifesto of those realities one of my very great mentors dr mike mudok he's taught the body of christ for a very long time that there are two dimensions to the dealings of god with man there are two dimensions to the approach of spiritual things number one he calls it the person of jesus and number two he calls it the principles of jesus number one he calls it the life of god number two he calls it the laws of god everybody say the life of god say the person of jesus say the principles of jesus and my mudok teaches that the person of Jesus is what gives you that encounter that creates your peace and secures your eternal destiny with God. But it's not necessarily the key for your victory here and now. Are we together now? So I can be born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, 
if I die, I'm going to heaven. If Jesus comes, I'm going to heaven. I can live a life of peace, whether in plenty or lack, because his person has consumed me. I have conformed to the image of the Christ experientially. But then the dimension that is responsible for my success and victory on earth is not just the person of Jesus, but the principles of Jesus. Everybody say the principles of Jesus. That means I can be born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, and yet be sick. Born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, and yet be poor. Born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, and yet fail in career. Born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, and become a total failure in life. Such a possibility exists. Now, most Christians have embraced the life of God, but we have ignored his principles. Are we together now? And most unbelievers have ignored the life of God, but embraced his principles. So most of them are going to hell because they have openly declared that Jesus is not Lord over their lives. But they have lived their entire lives applying the kingdom, applying the principles of the kingdom. And I've taught you here in Koinonia that there is a dimension of God's power that is programmed into his laws. So that whoever obeys them will get the result. Regardless of whether he has a relationship with God or not. There is a dimension of the power and the ability of God that is programmed in laws. So it doesn't matter who applies them. There are certain dimensions that are privy to only believers. It is only in Christ that those dimensions can be obtained. Like peace. Like the joy in the Holy Ghost. Are we together now? like the life of jesus security of your eternal destiny the ability to count it all joy when you face diverse temptations all of these attributes are not possible to the man who has not embraced christ but the principles of the kingdom the aspect that we have largely ignored i've shared with us on my my idea and i believe that that's god's idea of spiritual growth that there are two indices to measure a man's spiritual growth number one is the degree of your conformity to the image and the person of christ you are rising in character you are conforming experientially to the image of the christ but the second dimension the second index is your comprehension of the mysteries and the secrets of the kingdom both are required together to say you are growing spiritually if all that is happening to you is conformity to the image of christ that is a lopsided and a biased growth if all that is happening to you is just access to the principles of the kingdom and you never encounter the person and the life you will be carnal and you will never become a spiritual man so the synergy between these two dimensions is what produce spiritual men who are relevant both in time and eternity if that is you say amen are we together so failure is very real I think it was a wise man I don't know who exactly who said doing the same thing consistently and expecting a different result is one of the definitions of insanity doing the same thing and hoping and wishing that that same thing you are doing will just change results by itself he said it's one of the definition of insanity in other words if your outcome is not consistent with your desire then you have to check what you believe and what you are doing are we together now everyone say failure is real and it's not my portion Write this down. The word success. Let's define it. Let's look at the concept of success in the kingdom. Lord, give us understanding. Give us passion to learn. Please give us Isaiah 117. A scripture just came into my spirit. And I want you to see it. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 17. Write this word down. Success. What is the definition of success? I'm, I'm trying to introduce the concept of success because, please look up, the body of Christ has had issues for a very long time 
there are many denominations and there are many Christians, some of them looking at me right now, many listening to me online. Every time you mention the word success, especially in church and to a Christian, there is this buildup of resentment. We have associated success with carnality. We have taught and indoctrinated ourselves into believing that there are two groups of people in the body of Christ. Those who are carnal, they don't love God and want to be successful. And those who are total failures now for the sake of their spiritual growth. There's no such doctrine in the Bible. The Bible says looking up to Jesus, not up to a denomination, not up to a pastor. It's important to follow us, but be sure we are following Christ. And if at any point you are not following Christ, it is within your power to switch. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. I have shared with us again the danger of creating doctrines out of personalized dealings. That a man can have a particular bias which may be a product of his cultural limitation. Let me tell you something. Many of these doctrines that were shipped into the church and, and you know I love the body of Christ and I don't say it with any particular sense of cynicism. I'm teaching the body. And so we must realize that most of these things that have become stumbling blocks, listen carefully. Many of us have inherited this from our parents. Many of our, our loved ones, so spiritual and well-meaning. But this, this um, mindset, especially for all of us who are around the middle belt and the northern area because of the evangelical nature of christianity and the way we received it we have been taught that any attention that is paid to your comfort and giving your life some sense of meaning here and now is useless so in an attempt to emphasize the fact that we need to live with eternity in view we have created a system of mediocrity and camped around it so there are many lazy men who have used evangelical christianity as an excuse to keep them lazy keep their wives and their children in poverty and penury and suffering there are men today who have not have not been working for over 20 years and it, it doesn't matter one room with your children they were born and bred there and he said the most important thing is this world is not our home one day we are going somewhere is an expression of carelessness so there are many doctrines that have endorsed laziness endorsed irresponsibility endorsed lack of productivity so the average believer has been unable to rise to a position of kingdom influence where we can legislate on behalf of the kingdom it's a tragic situation please give us the scripture again he said read the first four words if you are a Christian one to read again the word do well is the word succeed so change it and use it well one to go again it didn't say be successful it says learn you must be taught it says learn to do well it's not just saying make it uh -uh. learn be studious submit yourself under the atmosphere and the information that will cause you to do well when i saw that scripture it was quite instructive learn to succeed joshua selman learn it is not in you by default learn the same way um where is he doctor it's not a doctor by default but you learn to become a doctor you learn to become an architect are we together you learn to become a mother that's why when ladies give birth for the first time their mothers or any of their guardians come around right and help them they can read books and google and search but it's one thing to have that theory and then all of a sudden the mother comes and says okay i will help you and then helps her and she becomes strong and then tomorrow she will help her own children learn say i will learn and i will succeed say i will learn i will be trained and i will succeed look at this when you want to become a doctor what do you do you pass through the medical school correct when you want to become an engineer what do you do you pass through the engineering school when you want to become an architect what do you do you pass through the system 
so when you want to become a success what do you do unfortunately there is no official institution for making people successful you see why many people are failures there are many graduates because there are many universities there are many primary school certificate holders because there are many primary schools there are many prisoners because there are many prisons and there are many opportunities for crime but there are few successful people because there are few successful mentors and there are few successful platforms that can help men become successful learn to do well write this down success is the accomplishment of a worthy goal write it down the word success has nothing to do with money it has nothing to do with all of these things success is the accomplishment of a worthy goal any goal that is ideal that is worthwhile when you set goals and achieve them you are said to be successful this is the general definition of success the accomplishment of a worthy goal a worthy ideal I want to become a doctor and then you pass through the system and you become a doctor with respect to that goal you are successful I want to become a joyful mother and you walk towards it and then eventually you get married and have your children with respect to that goal you are successful so without goals there is no basis for being successful are we together now The accomplishment of a worthy goal, a worthy ideal, is what we call success. Now, let me give you a kingdom definition of success. I've given you a general definition. Let's look at a kingdom definition. Write this down. The fulfillment of your God-given assignment is called success from God's standpoint. The fulfillment of your God-given assignment, not just any goal, if an arm robber says i must steal and then he steals successfully from an earthly standpoint we say he has succeeded from but from the kingdom standpoint is not a success the fulfillment of your divine assignment the fulfillment of your god-given assignment is called success another definition the effective use this is my own definition now the effective use of your life your gifts and your resources to draw men to Jesus and bless humanity is called success I'll take it again the effective use of your life comma your gifts comma your resources to draw men to jesus and then to be a blessing to humanity is my definition of success so when you use your life like a drink offering when you use your gifts and when you use your resources to draw men to jesus and then an opportunity to be a blessing to humanity by god's standpoint and by men's standpoint you are a success are we together now the effective use of your life the effective use of your gifts the effective use of your resources to draw men to Jesus and then to bless humanity to advance the purposes of the kingdom and to be a blessing to humanity that's success are you blessed now very important I, I need all of us to have this understanding so that when we talk about success we are not talking of some money mongering greedy lifestyle because this is another side of the pendulum there are many people who are so carnal so fleshly the entire circumference of their Christian experience is just money and houses and cars everything about their understanding of god is the one who gives my job is to just take take and be rich take and buy suit buy designers right move around the world in private jets and then we coin that and say this is my life it is a very misguided and not only misguided destructive idea 
about success. That's what puts people under pressure to try to acquire things because we hope that by acquiring things will prove a point to people. Now the truth is if you are successful, it will show around you. But the acquisition of things is not equivalent to success in the kingdom. That you are wearing a suit of a thousand or two thousand dollars. You are wearing shoes. You are having estates all around. And you are a great man moving around. And people bow down to you. And people call you all kinds of names. And you have multiplied troubles, multiplied psychophants. That does not make you a success. How much you use your life. How much you use your gifts. How much you use your resources. To draw men to Jesus and then to live a life of impact, blessing your world, blessing your humanity. Every other thing, cars, houses, all these auxiliary benefits are just effects of success, not the proof of success. The proof you have succeeded is the joy in the heart of the Father. The proof you have succeeded is a life transformed not a car in your garage the proof that you have succeeded is somebody coming to know jesus because you did business well somebody coming to know jesus because you read your book well somebody coming to know jesus because of your marriage somebody coming to love jesus because of your ministry when your life has the capacity to draw men regardless of what area you are functioning to jesus and then an opportunity to make a mark to transform their lives you are successful by this definition you will agree with me that there are very few people who are successful there are many rich people but they are not successful there are many educated people but they are not successful haven't seen this definition why then are many people failures what is the reason is it that there is no access to knowledge is it that satan is so powerful and can veto everything jesus died for is it that uh, though if the few who are successful were just designed by god to be successful why do we have a whole generation as failures a whole community as failures i will tell you why because of one word just one word is called dishonor i'm going to be teaching you a lot of things we're still going to come to this issue of honor there is one reason why any one of you here will be a failure in life only one reason it's not that you didn't go to school it's not that you graduated with a third class no that's a silly excuse it's not that you are a northern man and they are victimizing you down south or you are a southern man and they are victimizing you down north or you are an eastern man and they are victimizing you those are very flimsy excuses they are obvious answers but not correct answers are we together there is only one reason why men fail in life dishonor dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles there's only one reason why people fail and there's only one reason why they will remain failures dishonor dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles is god helping us write this down laws and principles laws and principles L A W S and then principles. I want us to examine the concept of laws and principles. Jesus, thank you. Look at me. In any other and every other aspect of our lives, we believe in laws and principles. But when it comes to our spiritual lives and our destinies, we do not believe that they walk by principles. It's a tragedy. It's a tragedy. Please hear me, brothers and sisters. It's a tragedy. When you go to school, you know that there are laws and principles. You are a science-based student. They teach you all kinds of science things. Physics, chemistry. They teach you how to do a lot of things. They teach you what to do. They teach you laws. Different kinds of laws. 
and the more you master those laws the more you keep advancing and then eventually when you have gained certain dimensions of mastery they award certain certificates to you but when it comes to destiny we have been indoctrinated into believing that we are just believers and whether we respect laws or not we will become successful i will tell you where our resentment for laws came from the imbalance and the inaccurate teaching of the concept of law and works this is where we got our resentment for the word laws great men and women of god scattered across the face of the earth in an attempt and i believe everything that they teach in an attempt to explain or to bring the body of christ into the reality of christ's finished work listen carefully in an attempt to show how that the old is gone the old testament you know and that we are products of this new testament now in an attempt to help believers live the victorious life we have from one person copying another without finding out what exactly is being said we have drifted to another side of the pendulum and so the average believer especially the average pentecostal charismatic believer when you hear the word laws when you hear the word principles you just reject it you don't even need to know law of what you just say no 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 i'm not under the law write this down laws are systems is a system of rules that guarantee a predictable outcome a law is a system of rules or just a system of operation either a system of rules or a system of operation that guarantees a predictable outcome so laws are systems of operations they are systems of rules that if and when diligently applied guarantee predictable outcomes write this down laws are a reflection of god's justice system laws are a reflection of god's justice system the bible says righteousness and justice are the foundations it didn't say where it never changed righteousness and justice are still the foundations of his throne laws are a reflection of god's justice system so that nobody will say god victimized others and did certain things no he leaves it into your hands to define whether or not you will succeed or fail write this down laws are the keys to consistency and predictability laws are the keys please pay attention especially those following online wherever you are i want you to please pay attention take notes if you can't follow us on facebook and, and we're tweeting and then we're we're making posts please follow i have a passion to help you understand this laws are the keys to consistency and predictability write this down when your results do not change regardless of obstacles then you are operating by laws when your results your outcomes do not change regardless of the prevailing obstacles is a sign that you are engaging laws hallelujah so you see a ministry celebrating 36 years a ministry celebrating 40 years People like Kenneth Copeland, Benny Hinn, 40 something years in ministry. Brothers and sisters, that ministry was built by laws. It was not just built by emotions. Many great corporations across the world. I don't know what the oldest um, retail outfit is in Nigeria. The oldest restaurant in Nigeria. But we have very great um, restaurants across the nation of the earth. Right? Like Colonel Sanders and his Kentucky Fried Chicken and a number of people walmart and all of this some of those outfits are hundreds of years old the founders have long been dead but the laws kept it write this down laws make your results outlive you laws and principles make your results outlive you laws and principles make your results outlive you
write this down finally and then i'll begin to teach correct understanding and application of laws are the keys to outstanding success correct understanding and application of laws are the keys to outstanding success correct understanding not just application correct understanding and application of laws and principles are the keys to outstanding success everybody look at this mike is playing something do you know that the same way he's playing this if someone in ghana if someone in america plays based on whatever sequence is playing they will get the same result because they are based on laws is that true please help me with this this is nestle water how many of you know there's nestle water in lagos how many of you know there's nestle water in ibadan how many of you know there's nestle water in maiduguri the taste is almost the same if not the same the packaging and everything when you look at this one and leave and go to a shop somewhere and you look at it you would think they took the one here there there is consistency in results there is sustainability there is predictability there are many workers those who package this in lagos may not be those who package it in another geopolitical zone but they are all governed by the same laws so their results are the same correct thank you um pastor femi please come my friend please come two of you please stand here now look how smart they are both looking stand here please now look at this pastor femi has a knotted tie and this gentleman here has a knotted tie now watch this were you in the same room when you were knotting your ties did you meet yourselves did you know you were going to knot ties but you took this rope did something to it and it became this and you see how much it looks like the same thing both of them were miles apart but engaging the same principle and regardless of their location the results were the same are we together now now this guy will not say lila i'm not going to not because i'm not in koinonia no if a thief knots this tie to dress smart and go and steal the tie will not say you are a thief in two hours you are about to steal i won't agree no laws laws if a wicked man plants maize and a tongue-talking born again agriculturist plants maize both lands will produce and in fact this guy may even have a bumper harvest correct laws create similarity of results so if i want to teach someone else how to be a smart gentleman like this not in ties i don't need to tell him come and live with me forever i just need to show him how to convert a rope a nylon rope or a cotton rope are we together now to become such a beautiful object that you can put on your neck thank you sirs So it's not just where you are it's not just your background there is something you do not know you've heard me say it many times something i do not know is responsible for my limitation in life how true how true the correct understanding and application of laws are the keys to outstanding success we had a great time over at bida um, we rounded off the meeting yesterday and I'm sure some of them are following. It was such a great time as God always does in the meetings. And I had a little session with the leaders and many of them kept asking me questions. Man of God, what is the secret to your anointing? And I, in my mind, I thought, I said, if I tell these people now, they will not believe it. Do you see that? As I'm speaking to you right now, somebody in another meeting unconnected to koinonia is still experiencing wisdom and the power of god at the same time you look at a graduate from unn you look at a graduate from abu 
you look at a graduate from Unilag, bring all of them together, haven't never met themselves, but they were submitted to the same laws. They will talk as though they know, they've known themselves for years. Correct? That means there is something all of us can know that regardless of where you are, all of us will call and they'll say, are you experiencing the same result? You say, exactly as said. Do you believe that? Honestly, if you don't believe this, just go home because it will be that you are wasting your time this night. The, the goal of this teaching is to create predictability to your success. Is, is success important? Somebody may be asking me. Be patient and ask me five years from now. Remain the way you are and keep going. I will be glad to answer you five years from now. When you watch what happened to those who are five years ahead of you now. When you watch the pain. When you watch three children stand before you. And say daddy we are hungry. When you watch your child become an arm robber. Simply because of failure. Then you will ask that question again. Is success important? It's a terrible thing. Please be careful how you listen to people. Don't criticize men of God. Don't criticize leaders. Even business experts. Be careful. Right now we have all kinds of business experts. Anyone just chokes himself with tie. Holding all kinds of hilarious seminars everywhere. And teaching all kinds of garbages and nonsense. And in the end of it. You are so motivated because of the rhetorics. And the gimmicks that are used. And then at the end of it you find out that your life is just an emotional roller coaster and you get back into square one be careful i desire to succeed with my life i have tasted a bit of it it gives me joy to be able to lead a flourishing ministry i know how painful it is to suffer and struggle in ministry i know how painful it is to come and prepare as a man of god and not have anybody to bless today by the grace of god we are reaching several nations of the world and we are only starting i have tasted a bit of the potency of these laws and i know they work they will work for you in the name of jesus christ they will work for you in the name of jesus christ one of, I think it's, I think it's patients, I spot her here. She sent me a text, very, very funny text. And um, she's a student in the school of ministry. And I'd been teaching them a number of things. And then she, she went to Zamfara and had an opportunity to pray for someone to be filled with the Holy Spirit. According to her, she was shaking and wondering whether it would happen. And I mean, in minutes, that person was shaking and blasting in tongues. And she called me and said, my God, look at this thing. And then she tried it on another person and it worked flawlessly. Predictability. Predictability. There are keys. Nobody is born rich. Nobody is born blessed. Are we together? He said, in iniquity did my mother conceive me. Your, you can live out like that or you can change. I made a decision that I will change. It's a decision that I made. And I want you tonight, if you have not made that decision, to make a strong decision. I'm taking it gradually with us because I want us to understand this. Let's define terminologies, right? We are going to define 14 words that we will be playing around with in this series. 14 words that have been misunderstood. I don't want to make the mistake of believing that when I mention a word, all of us understand that this is what I'm saying. Write it down. The first word I've already defined is success. The accomplishment of a worthy goal. Am I boring you? Please write. The second word I want us to define and familiarize ourselves with is failure. What is failure? Write it down. That's the second word. I'll be very, very fast so that we can stop somewhere and pray. Jesus, we bless you. Failure is a state or condition of not meeting a desirable or intended objective. Failure is a state or a condition of not meeting a desirable or intended objective. You are said to have failed 
when you do not meet up to a desirable objective or an intended objective the inability to meet your desired or intended objectives generally speaking is regarded as failure word number three favor what is favor and um maybe i may dwell a bit here just trying to explain a few things because our general mainstream definition of favor especially in the body of christ is very limited it does not bring out the substance especially when it has to do with favor with men generally we define favor as unmerited access you know and that is right we define favor as grace that is right but let me give you three definitions of favor very quickly number one favor means help full stop favor means what help h-e-l-p help whether divine or human favor means help still defining favor what is favor god and men contributing to ensure that you succeed what is favor god and men contributing to ensure that you succeed that's favor when god comes into partnership with you when men come into partnership with you to ensure that you succeed then you are said to be a favored person god and men contributing to ensure that you succeed number three what is favor men investing their time credibility and resources to help you achieve your goals what is favor men investing their time men investing their credibility men investing their resources to help you achieve your goals when a man invests his time that's favor when a man endorses you puts his reputation and credibility on the line to make sure you rise that's favor when men invest their resources be it spiritual financial whatever it is to help you achieve your goals that's favor never forget these three definitions they are powerful definitions word number four grace let's define grace word number four grace i wrote something down i had to tear it out of my little note i want to read it for you one day i was inspired and i wrote it down about grace just pay attention as i list as i read grace as understood by many is seen as unmerited access listen to me this very confusion exaggeration over the powerful concept of grace stems from this one definition okay the very confusion and exaggeration over the powerful concept of grace stems from this one definition a very correct and biblical definition but very limiting to define grace only as unmerited access is a correct definition it is biblical but it is very limiting and sometimes can be destructive grace this is what i define grace as no i will tell you just just listen to me i'm, I'm giving you my contemplations just listen grace is a multi-dimensional reality in the realm of the spirit and in the dealings of god with men that doesn't just refer to things unmerited but realities and provisions that are exclusively found or domiciled and accessed from god in christ in other words the definition of grace is not just limited to things unmerited but it is also anything that comes from god are we together now it is a generic expression that attempts to communicate a reality 
a provision a possibility of things not obtained from the earth realm but from God and only in and through Christ now listen I wrote this down this definition allows for other dimensions of grace to be captured and experienced this morning the Holy Spirit okay this is me writing permit me I'm reading as I just wrote directly this morning the Holy Spirit himself gave me the best and most concise definition of grace I have ever heard and known and I'll tell you what the Holy Spirit told me about grace ready James 1 17 this is how the Holy Spirit defined grace for me James 1 17 please put it up for us very fast let's see how we can gain time James 1 17 this is a definition of grace read it one to read every good and perfect every good gift and every perfect gift that comes from above and cometh down from the father of light stop is called grace anointing is grace wisdom is grace promises achieved is grace anything that is not within the jurisdiction of the earth realm that requires coming down from heaven from the father of light and can only be available in christ and through christ is called grace let me finish this i wrote something down every good gift the word gift there please leave that scripture up let me just explain something the word gift there is the word dosis and it means the act of giving and every perfect gift is the word dorema which means the thing given so it talks about both the thing given and the act of giving are we together now then it says it's from above and all of that now this scripture shows that grace is not limited to gifts alone but the very act of communicating things from god to men is called grace are you getting my point now so that grace is not just a thing you collect the very act of communicating with god is called grace now i define grace for you write this down grace is the sum total grace is the sum total of any and all things made available to man by god comma i'll take it again grace is the sum total of any and all things made available to man by god but only in and through christ grace is the sum total of any and all things made available to man by god but only in and through christ so the anointing is an expression of grace prosperity is an expression of grace salvation an expression of grace protection all of these things are expressions of grace look at me when you define grace only as unmerited access then there is no space for obedience to be featured in grace are you hearing what i'm saying now now when you obey and get results it is true that what god is giving you is unmerited in that you cannot receive it are we together now but being unmerited does not stop the fact that there are conditions to fulfill the cheapest thing we get is salvation and even salvation requires a response you use your mouth you use your hands you use your legs you use your tears there is a participation the gift is unmerited but the act of receiving is merited are we together whosoever calls on the name of the lord shall be saved whosoever does not call upon the name of the lord whosoever believes in him shall have life everlasting whosoever does not believe in him is condemned already these are the words of jesus please don't limit grace to just unmerited access uh -uh. grace is access
definition number five let's hurry up works let's define works now that i've defined grace i have to define works because if i do not define works um then there will be a lot of confusion let me i also wrote something about works here listen to my contemplation about works and then we'll dictate works on the other hand should not be equated with action rather certain kinds of activities look up let me explain to you what i mean many times we have been taught the moment you hear the word works you just mean ah i'm not i don't have any works again you are joking you are joking we will work for the rest of our lives there is works works as defined in context to grace and in context to the old testament refers to certain kinds of activities that um, were captured in the Judaic laws and were captured in the commandments that were given to Moses that men must do ceremonial activities to the end that they will be able to create a system of atonement for themselves that's what was abolished works is not the same as action action is still relevant for results do not equate works with actions the works of the law are different from works what was abolished was the works of the law i never will have to slaughter an animal again i never will have to mediate between a priest to help me reach god once and and forever christ has offered himself the veil has been torn that is true but to mean there is nothing else to do in terms of action in terms of obedience in terms of partnership in terms of participation is a joke the bible says we are saved by grace but that system works through faith and faith is not just believing and confessing is the summation of everything you do in obedience to fulfill the conditions that are tied to the results you desire it's called faith it's the word pistis it doesn't just mean conviction conviction first but the actions that are taken in partnership with that conviction to get a desired outcome what are works in the new testament every time we talk of works we mean one word obedience write it down works in the new testament is obedience works in the new testament is partnership please write this down every time we talk of works we are not talking about going back to the law ceremonial cleansings and all of these rituals that were captured in, in the Judaic law and then all the hilarious laws and the stringent conditions that the nation of Israel had to go through that has been abolished once and forever but obedience will always be a requirement always be a requirement partnership will always be a requirement so works equal obedience to the believer today your partnership towards making promises manifest is what i call works your partnership towards making promises manifest is what we call works we need to define this because i'm going to be playing around with these words and um it's important that all of us when you hear it you know what i'm saying number what now let's hurry up i will rush now number six excellence let's define excellence very quickly number six excellence what is excellence excellence means the highest level of quality available write it down the highest level of quality available is called excellence the highest level of quality available is called excellence another definition surpassing ordinary standards is called excellence so you are excellent to the degree to which you can produce the highest level of quality available you are excellent to the degree to which you surpass ordinary standards can i continue next word mediocrity what is mediocrity the quality of being average mediocrity is the quality of being average please participate pay attention to these words the quality of being average what does it mean to be mediocre to be common what does it mean to be mediocre to be indifferent 
the quality of being average the quality of being common the quality of indifference what does it mean to be mediocre ordinary like everyone else ordinary like everyone else is the attitude of mediocrity average common indifference like everyone else next definition eight am i right number eight relationships what are relationships write this down relationships are advantageous connections simple relationships are advantageous connections broadly speaking connections but with respect to what we are dealing with advantageous connections everyone say advantageous connections say it inside and outside advantageous connections write this down usually mutually beneficial usually mutually beneficial so we are talking about advantageous connections this is my definition that is usually mutually beneficial that means all the parties involved in that connectivity should benefit relationships can be both divine and human write it down relationships can be both divine and human it is possible to have a relationship with god it's possible to have a relationship with satan it's possible to have a relationship with a demon spirit it's possible to have a relationship with the holy spirit advantageous connections number nine knowledge what is knowledge thank you jesus what is knowledge the gathering or acquisition of information the gathering or acquisition of information or facts that's called knowledge the gathering or acquisition of information facts is called knowledge many of you are tired of writing that's the secret to your peace just keep writing what is knowledge awareness of familiarity what is knowledge awareness of familiarity that is gained through education or experience what is knowledge again awareness or familiarity that is gained through experience or through education can i continue number 10 understanding the 10th terminology we are defining understanding what is understanding comprehension comprehension in one word understanding is comprehension Eleven, wisdom we're almost there Eleven, wisdom correct application of knowledge also means accurate application of knowledge write it down wisdom is the correct application of knowledge also refers to the accurate application of knowledge when knowledge is applied accurately and correctly it's called wisdom Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. Do you know what? Do you know what I'm imagining? I'm just imagining how many of you buy me cars and houses and say, Apostle, thank you thank you thank you no no look you will be too blessed to do it even if you don't like me you will do it you will turn back one day i'll come to your house and when others are languishing i will see you together with your children giving god praise and say today is a day off we are just worshiping and blessing his name and people will say are you in nigeria you say no i i am only here but we 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 
we sit on a throne and we manipulate things according to our order remember i used to say this thing years ago believe it oh believe it i imagine you going to your mother and your father and say mama i know you did not make it in this life but i have a surprise cover her eyes and take her somewhere and say mama the car you did not drive this is it let the devil do anything he would do do you think your mother will be happy you are going to someone's house and you are seeing them want to tear your members close because of rent I must kill you now. How much? 250,000. That's all right. That's all right. In two minutes, he's there. God bless you. Not alone. I pray that God will help you. God will make this happen. Someone will step into your home and see peace between you and your children and be born again there. No preaching. And say, This is what I've been fighting. This is what I'm teaching you. If you pay attention, I don't care what tribe, I don't care what background, I don't care what is happening or not happening in your life. You listen to this, you will arise. Number 12, prosperity. Let's define prosperity. What does it mean to prosper? It means to do well. Quickly, please. Prosperity means to do well. Prosperity means to excel. Prosperity means to flourish. Prosperity means to thrive. It means to do well. It means to excel. It means to flourish. It means to thrive. That's what it means to prosper. Two more definitions and we're there. Number 13. Goals. G-O-A-L-S. Goals. What are goals? Clearly defined desires, objectives, and outcomes. What are goals? Clearly defined desires, objectives, and outcomes. Clearly defined desires, objectives, and outcomes. 14, the last word. Value. V A L U E value. What is the definition of value? Write it down. Point of difference. What is the definition of value? Point of difference. Another definition your uniqueness. Another definition your skill. So, what is value? Your point of difference your uniqueness your skill write this down under value everything that constitutes an advantage in your life and is capable of blessing humanity and glorifying god is called value i repeat everything that constitutes an advantage in your life and is capable of blessing humanity and glorifying god is called value everything that constitutes an advantage in your life and is capable of blessing humanity and is capable of glorifying god is called value take a deep breath you have tried you have been writing some of you that's a key to drive laziness you've not done this in a long time I gave you 14 definitions that have controlled the destinies of many. I gave you 14 definitions that are capable of changing your life from tonight. I gave you 14 definitions that will be the key between your joy or your pain. Listen, I gave you 14 definitions that will make your church, your ministry, your group excel or fail. I gave you 14 definitions that will tell us what you will become. Write this down. Success is predictable. I don't need to see your results to know whether you will be successful. Success is predictable now. 
I can look at your life now and predict with digital precision whether or not you will succeed. There are people I look at their lives and I know they will fail. It's a very sad truth. They will be offended and they will think he's proud. Are you God? And then you see that you really failed. Failure is also predictable. Write it down. So success is predictable. Semicolon. Failure is also predictable. I can look at your life, brothers and sisters, and I can know that you are going to be a very powerful prayer warrior. You are going to be a very great word addict. But I know that as far as success is concerned, you may not be very successful. I can look at your life and I know that you are going to be a very rich man. You will buy the jets and the Rolls Royces, but you will never be a spiritual man. I can look at your life and know that you may be a happy man in terms of finances, but marriage you will pay a deep price. I can look at your life and know you are going to be a very good husband, but a very poor and broke man. I can look at your life and know that you are going to be a very intelligent graduate, but you may be jobless for the rest of your life or you may barely be employed and remain at the lower levels i can look at your life and know you will never rise to a managerial position listen the spirit realm is higher than the natural realm but it's not unpredictable we look at the clouds and we can forecast with a very commendable level of accuracy that there will be rain and it happens a pilot tells you we are landing at five minutes past one five minutes past one on the dot the tire is touching the ground we can we can tame our environment with that degree of accuracy what makes you think you need money in your account to prove you are successful i can look at you now and know that even if one million is in your account it will run away as fast as it came you know years ago as i began to pursue the things of the spirit i stumbled across materials that taught on this i folded them with speed and threw them one side said, look let me press on this how foolish i was imagine that i came for koinonia now and after preaching a powerful message i now tell you all of you you are going to sow my mind is not stable I'm, i need i need you have to pay my rent i'm blessing you the bible says a and b and c everybody stand up worship team you are bringing fifty thousand. prayer band you are bringing one million <laughs> Benga. <laughs> You are not praying for nothing. One million. Leaders, you are bringing two million. Oh, what a cost way of leadership. You will never bless anybody being a nuisance that way. God did not send me to be a nuisance to you. He sent me to bless you. Yes. It will never happen in this ministry. Where I will say, please, raise offering for me. So that I can eat well. No. You know what we call escape velocity in physics where you have gone past certain things it's not pride it will never happen again till jesus comes i found my way to better days <laughs> i found my way to better days for many of you tonight you're on your way to better days let them laugh at you. You're on your way. Status is changed. Prophesy to yourself. Oh,
For some of you, you were joking. For some of you, you were emotional. But for a few of you, you meant it. You know why? Let me ask all of you now in one minute. I want you to cast your mind at the worst thing you have seen happen to you and your parents. For some of you, is that you were thrown outside. For some of you, is that you had admission, but there was no money to pay. For some of you, is that you had to go and sleep with somebody somewhere to raise 10,000 and bring back home to eat. For some of you, is that you even found yourself in occultic groups because you wanted charm for protection or success. For some of you, there are men of God probably listening to me. You have had to, under pressure, join fraternities because you are hoping that it will give you ministry connection. Listen, if you don't do anything about your success, failure will force you to do wrong things. If you don't do anything about your success, failure will force you to do wrong things. When I look at people who say, God forbid, over my dead body, I will never do this and that, I tell them, keep quiet. You don't know the pressure that failure forces people. Pressure can make you do things you never imagined you would do. I've shared with you here, I think it's in Koinonia. Years ago when I counseled a lady whose situation broke my heart and it motivated my appetite to understand its success. Her mother, true story, her mother was working with a boss and the father I think was not working and then they got to a point in their life where they were stranded. I, I don't know if it was whatever it is, but it was a very serious issue. And the woman went to the boss to plead if she could have a raise in her salary to allow her cater for the needs of the family. Being the chief bottom bearer, which is very wrong of the entire family. And according to what the lady told me, she said the boss looked at her own mother and said, you are not a, a small girl. You know what to do. If you want a raise, someone's mother matured lady you know what to do and the mother initially refused but when she went to meet the father the situation the pressure was overwhelming both of them agreed that the mother should go and sleep with the man now yeah i know you are, we are we have we can shout in church ah, i won't do it don't talk like that because the person who did it is not an idiot when somebody sits down with the head of a goat all through the night he never planned it that's what pressure me. when the girl told me that thing, do you know what happened do you know that after the man paid that woman her money the shame she had to still quit the job and leave when the lady told me I said oh god what is this we are here jumping in church saying since I was young, now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. That is such a lie. I've seen many righteous people forsaken. Oh, I've seen many of their seed beg for bread. We sing it by faith and I believe it. But I have seen many righteous people, such as our parents, such as your brother and your sister. You know them. They love God. They have been dejected and forsaken. They forsook loves. 
and good things left. Success is predictable. Failure is predictable. You can make up your mind from today that you are going to start a journey that will lead you into a dimension of success. You can make up your mind today that you are going to begin in, in a way and a dimension that you have never seen. To obey these laws and excel. Let's start with at least one or two of the laws for tonight. Ready? The laws of success. Thank you, Jesus. Ready? The first law of success, the law of relationships. Write it down. The law of relationships. Ignore this and suffer for the rest of your life. Embrace this and watch your life change as though you are holding a charm. Everybody say the law of relationships. Shout it. The law of... Write this down. Success is highly relationship dependent. Success is highly relationship dependent. Your success and my success in life is highly relationship dependent. Number two, everything money can buy, relationships can buy it. Write it down. Everything, I don't care what it is, anything at all that money can buy, relationship can pay for it money can buy a house relationships can buy a house money can help you build a church relationship can help you build a church listen money as you know naira and cobalt dollars pounds yen these things are not the only means of exchange relationship is currency you can use it to pay for things relationship is currency you can use it to pay for things there are many ignorant people who want to be successful but they do not know the law of relationships so they have to look for money to pay for everything you ask them and they tell you i need five million i need ten million whereas the relationship you have is worth billions of naira in value and it is capable of paying for anything money can pay for there are people who have had to pay hundreds of thousands in a seminar and another person relationship paid for it and he entered free are we together now there are people who have had to pay for rent and others relationship has been paying their rent there are people who have had to pay for everything in life. Listen, if you use money to buy everything in life, you are not wise. No. It is a total display of lack of wisdom to use finances to get everything in life. It has nothing to do with being rich. That's the mistake our parents made. I love our parents, don't get me wrong. Some of you here are parents, we love you, we honor you with all our hearts. Most people think you only succeed when you start having salary, 100,000 coming. And they now say, wow, I have 100,000. Then they have a need. They ignore relationships. And something that would be cheaply paid for, they would have to look for money and pay for it. I have paid for many things in my life using relationship. Relationship like a debit card. You can use it and withdraw many other things. You can use it and pay for many other things. Relationships today by the grace of God has given me platforms. I am connected to people. Listen, connectivity is a key to success. You must be connected. Relationships can help you access anointings. Relationships
can help you access endorsements. Relationships can help you access favor. 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 The major ingredient in success is favor. But it takes relationships. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words. Hallelujah. There are things in my life I would have paid for financially. Let me give you an example. This great auditorium, an act of kindness and benevolence by CGC. We have never paid a single couple for this venue. And some of you who are into real estate know if you value this and we have to pay every week for all of this. Imagine the millions of naira that relationship has made for yes. Something in your life that you are hoping to change today is relationship dependent. Something, a dimension in your life you must enter now is relationship dependent. Unfortunately, for many of us, all we know is just love relationship. Husband and wife, somebody who likes a lady, a lady likes him back. That, that's only an aspect of it. Your relationship with God is a key to your success. Correct? You excel in life on the strength of your relationship with God. The healthier your relationship with God, the healthier your relationship with the Spirit of God, the greater your success. The prodigal son, please help me with the sound, please. The prodigal son made a big mistake. He broke relationship to look for money. Are you seeing the mistake of the prodigal son? Thank you. He, he jeopardized the potential for relationship. He had a relationship with his father. And on the strength of his relationship with his father, he did not pay for food. He did not pay for protection. But here's what he said. I don't want relationship. I rather want money. And he ended relationship and got money. What happened to the money? Without relationships, your finances will always be finite. There is only so much. Relationship is the secret of continual financial flow. Relationship is the secret. It is relationship that will keep finances i'm not talking about finances necessarily but i'm just using it as a case study relationships people have blessed me today purely based on relationships not even as in the capacity as a, of, of a man of god just to bless do you know that somebody in zaria today has the heart to bless you but you do not have the connection are you hearing what I'm saying now? Somebody has the capacity to pay for your rent without begging and without lying. Somebody has the capacity to give you free land purely based on relationship. During my birthday, people did things for me that almost brought tears from my eyes. I, I usually am not into celebrating birthdays and the rest. The leaders did something touching. Different people did things, but there were certain strategic blessings and things they were done. And I said, God, what is this? What is this? Relationships. Relationship can give you access to realms where your physical qualification should not allow you to enter there. Many of us have been trivializing relationships. That's why we keep hustling. The Bible says the labor of the fool where yet every one of them, he does not know the road to the city. By the grace of God, I understand the ministry of destiny helpers. The ministry of destiny helpers is futile without relationship. God has used me as a destiny helper to many. God has used many people as destiny helpers to me. Hallelujah. Cheap victories that many of us lose. Cheap victories. Some of our parents do not know anybody. And so you pay for everything. And when you want to use money alone to be successful, a day will come you will have all the money in your life. And you will find out that there are some things money cannot do. Are we together? 
there are people you know one of the greatest this is one of the greatest lessons that i've learned from my father my father is a man who was wealthy in relationships i used to think he was just you know you know just someone who just likes people but now that i've grown i have seen the wisdom relationship paid many bills for my father relationships let me tell you something relationship is an investment the same way you invest in business is the way you invest in relationship all this something for nothing is, is a joke there are many of us we have this self flattery they don't like me you don't call me i won't call you sit down there the day you need the person you don't call that's when you know relationships are important relationships are very serious value adding investments there are times you will call your destiny helper he will not respond there are times you will send him 100 naira credit there are times you will say sir just to appreciate you you will take out time to compose a text message as if you would die there and he will just send you one word god bless you but he's working the day you now ask for help you have set a template there are people today if you ever see their text they are begging the moment the need is met they forget the relationships until the day a need arises uncle it's me again no it's junior say hey, i know you are junior what is the issue say uncle you know i mean i'm in 400 level now honestly i say are you the first to be there you are matured enough to start working uncle we are we are traveling somewhere we are going so and he says don't be stupid don't you ever call my line again most of you when you call your helpers this is what they tell you it's only when you have trouble that you call me anytime anybody tells you that you need to strengthen your relationship many of us have very bad relationship maintenance systems for as long i know many great people sadly some of them even great people i know they don't know how to keep relationships at all anytime you see their call one missed call two missed call they're in trouble they need a favor they need a help some of you are born again tongue talking but you are like that and you have closed doors closed doors your friend is celebrating a birthday you can never remember say i'm too busy are we together now your your whatever it is i'm too busy hey, Jimmy is my friend i love him and you know sometimes you see him and the wife and the two children of course um not everybody will have access to come and visit me that's the privilege of friendship nobody is born with intimacy by default you walk your way into it listen i am a busy person it is true there are many people who say apostle i've been trying to see you what what ordinance do i have to see you what covenant do i have with who to see you i've been trying to see you you are not attending to me that's a foolish statement you should ask yourself those who have unlimited access what are they doing that's the key in time past there were offices i tried to access i've shared with you my story years ago when i went to look for a loan i won't tell you the amount i went to look for a loan in a bank these people wasted my time and did all kinds of things and i found out i had brain capital but no relationship capital and i made up my mind some of us the fire is getting hotter by the day and you think the key is to get a job quickly find relationships do you know there are people who are not working but relationship is paying them salary every month until they get a job yes sir i know people like that my mother has a relationship with me forever my father has a relationship with me forever my siblings have relationships with me forever as i rise they rise it's called blessed by association listen once the easiest way to be rich is to find somebody building something great and invest quickly and help the person rise and as you rise chop i chop i'm teaching you listen there you see the body of christ people there, there are many foolish people in the body of christ you watch people when they are starting you are the first to run your mouth i don't believe in them now you have access to them there are people years ago they had access to me they would have been some of the closest people to me today enjoying every blessing but they just saw it today now do you know the door you enter kicking your leg tomorrow you will feel a form
so now that god gives you the opportunity there are people who use 50 naira to secure a relationship that is worth millions today that's wise investment the day that great man was looking for water you quickly carried your 50 naira the bible gives us a parable i don't have time in the bible where a man oh listen a man was about to be sacked by a king are we together and he knew he was in trouble he had been defrauding people a tax collector now they were going to throw him away do you know what he did he quickly called the people and said how much do you owe so so amount i reduce it for you ah and the moment they sat him he went back to them i scratch your back scratch my own too now this is a system that the world uses but believers don't know this koinonia is very connected to several people you see us connected to the military we are connected to the police we are connected to medical personnel we are connected to politicians because you rise through a network of relationships you don't know which it's not just about being selfish it's the way it happens relationships everybody shout relationships some of us if our parents knew this some of them their classmates today are the ministers in charge of abc no relationship to bless them is that true do you know there are people who sit down today and calls just come they call them one old day. Ah, promise where are you I'm, I'm i'm trusting god for what come 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 there's create one committee that doesn't make sense and say sit down there you are the chairman in charge of it after, when god helps you after seven months they say okay that's all right it's dissolved just because you must be blessed ask mephibosheth how he paid for royalty relationships a man who was crippled are you learning what i'm ask the disciples how they became apostles relationship even when they ran away for three days when jesus resurrected they quickly apologized lord i'm sorry i'm still on your team and they became apostles are you hearing what i'm saying many of you right here you come for koinonia all the time and you have a a resentful attitude this brother you are not you are not my class you are not wearing my shoe rather than for you to sit down and say ah this brother is always taking notes god is taking him somewhere he may have one trouser 200 naira one shoe one whatever but what is entering his spirit is programming him for greatness some of you resent every other person who is not you you are losing you are losing big time in life just this law alone will bless you i am i am i am a benefactor of relationships by the grace of god god has connected our ministry with all kinds of people oh, there is there is nothing at this level by the grace of god there is nobody within our sphere of influence that we want to meet that we cannot meet it's impossible somebody knows somebody do you know statistically they say you are four people away from anybody you want to meet four people four people there are others who will invite a guest minister in the capacity of his office and pay one million honorarium someone else because of relationship he said no 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 whatever you know i mean we are together i pray for you from the depth of my heart that the the power of relationships will show in your life from today please sit down many times you see an old woman carrying firewood on her head firewood that is as heavy as five men she puts it on her head walking the question i ask is where are her relationships this mama is 70 years she spent 70 years on earth and you cannot build a relationship with one successful person listen if you are up to 25 years hearing me and there is no one successful person in your life you are really failing hear what i'm saying you are really failing there is nobody to run to when things go bad there are people like that you are a pastor you want to hold a convention and you are stranded financially 
nobody in your circle of influence has risen to say please sir cover my shame for me relationships cover your shame relationships cover your shame who is standing in for you who is helping you rise you go to an oil company holding your certificate and you knock at the gate and the gate man says yes say I, I prayed and God led me to come and submit my CV he says bring it as he collects it he throws it inside a dustbin and you go back rejoicing and keep seeing visions of yourself working in an oil company till you are past the age that they will receive you because there's no relationship another unbeliever let me tell you this and I say this sincerely this is one secret that Muslims have relationships relationships you will hardly see a muslim child go somewhere that his father cannot create that's why some of course I, I i love them we love muslims and all of that and you find out that there are some of them you see them in your schools they, don't, they are not even serious because they know that relationship has already had they had the degree before they started so this is just a ceremony for all of that to happen because relationship has created a degree somewhere there is a space that has been created since they were in 200 level waiting for them to occupy but believers don't have that wisdom i show you the life of god versus the principles Are we together? There is no day in my life that relationship does not bless me. There is no day. I say it, may God forgive me if I'm lying, but it's true. There is no day in my life that relationship does not bless me. You cook by yourself. You wash your clothes by yourself. You intercede for yourself. No relationship nobody seen anything about you to pray for you by yourself you are looking for favor by yourself they drive you alone you walk alone you counsel yourself you motivate say relationships say the law of relationships i made a statement years ago and i repeat it every once and again that we will all be great right and the greater part is that we will all know ourselves praise god sorry about that some of you here um will never have any helper do you know why you are anti-friendship your persona is anti-friendship you are resentful you are rude you are callous you are very very offensive in your approach turn and tell one another good evening and somebody turns and you are looking at the person you are not my class stop that oh listen he that wants friends must first show himself humble yourself in this training ground where nobody knows who is who it's only god that knows whose destiny you see me hug people here some of you see me hug our little children and you think that uh, i'm just hugging them i will continue to hug them because at their age we're not thinking like them that means most likely they'll be better than us at age 12 some of us were absolutely foolish these children at age 12 pray in tongues love god join prayer department some of them i mean look at a destiny like an arrow and you are missing an opportunity to invest you now come when it's too late when the person has become a big man do you know there are people who call my phone all the time sending insults and saying apostle uh, whatever it is they call you you are claiming you don't know me i say i don't know you i don't know you i don't know you don't bully me i don't know you listen when you celebrate a great man when he's great is too late mm. you came way too late you don't celebrate greatness when greatness manifests you celebrate greatness in the process you participate in it that's why i'm excited for you because i have the privilege of participating in your success how in the world can i fail 
listen with all humility there are people today by the grace of god that i have raised who will never allow me beg for bread till jesus comes even if i decide to be careless and i i stop obeying any law of lifting you have sat down on on a you know how they do what they call it uh, um, let me not talk business here all those uh, businesses that you do you sit down you bring somebody and you keep rising that's how you can sit on a chair and keep rising like that forever because you paid the price to build someone are you hearing what i'm saying now question whose destiny are you investing in today question who will remember you when he gets to the throne if you are not there when i'm in the cave don't expect to be there when i'm on the throne if you were not there when i was on the cave don't expect to be featured there are, there are many lousy people in the body of christ with an entitlement mentality you hear them say i knew you i knew where you were not in what did you do about it when i was walking my way when i was hungry did you ever give me water you were part of those grumbling and talking and now that rejected stone has become the chief cornerstone you are now seeing the man of god in glory and power and you are saying we are colleagues we are not colleagues no sir listen be careful and don't let men bully you with their complacency and their inability to invest in your relationship anybody who does not think you are worth a good relationship should not be found in your future there are people listen i'm rounding up there are some of you many people who would have lifted you look at you now and they think you are failures because of what is happening they gist about you sometimes you hear it sometimes they say it to your face but they don't know what it is that is happening and then when you rise you see them come with entitlement mentality you should give me a house you should give me a car and you ask them why they say because i knew you before no sir everybody who believed in me when i was nothing is impossible for them to fail in life because they took a risk by believing in someone they never saw any result and now their risk is yielding dividends so it is not wickedness when you see somebody bless somebody there are people in my life no matter how foolish and stupid they become i'm bound to them forever because they believed in me when i was nothing rejoice not over me my enemies for though i fall yet i will rise again are you hearing what i'm saying some of you in the whole of your family nobody believes in you they've told you to your face you will not amount to anything obey these laws and watch god shock every one of them to their knees apostle i want to be blessed what are you doing i just need hundred thousand to start a business who fooled you that that's all it takes to succeed you see that you have two tiers of rice in your house it can pay for a growing relationship you can cook food invite five of your friends and say look just to honor you guys i know that i don't have much now but i just love you after 10 years they will tell you remember that our rice now enter this five-star hotel let's now eat my own version of the rice and someone looks at you listen someone looks at say and you say you you shouldn't be in the palace you say i paid for it since <laughs> i paid for the palace when i could afford it i show you wisdom keys that men are using to climb ladders of greatness so you can see somebody in the future come you see somebody in the future no charisma no anointing yet favor will never stop leaving him everybody knows him we're about leaving be that today and a man of god who also came for administration the man of god came for administration i was about to enter the car let's go and then um the protocol stopped me and said please i need to attend to him i turned to him and i said hello sir i don't know you he said sir you don't need to know me i came for administration and i had you were around i stopped the guy was holding a seat in his hand say relationships there are people who will be talking who should we lift here and somebody will say please i have one daughter I have one son not my biological child but this child is so well well mannered very lovely person the person did not read this course but that person has character and say send for that person quickly 
you see people who read something that has no business with what they are doing yet they keep rising to be directors relationships keep promoting them tonight we are going to pray i will stop here lord one will continue the remaining next week there are plenty laws i will share with you the easiest way to succeed is to invest in relationships relationship is a stream of income when you are writing all your streams of income write relationships it will cost you now because under relationships you don't sell anything you give for free sometimes you need to be a fool investing in relationships some of you after this meeting you need to go and sit down and say lord who are the five most valuable people in my life and start calling them sometimes you don't even need five you just need one and say sir do you know there are people in my life who send credit all the time they don't have much it may be hundred naira. i'm not saying you should do it but i see the passion they are making to establish a relationship with me billy graham we talk about billy graham as the great evangelist do you know one of the reasons why he was great he had endorsements of every president before that happened it was said every time billy graham would write letters to members of parliament and the president of the united states wanting meeting with them they would throw away the letter he kept doing it and one day just one person attended to him a day will come the door will open don't think you will knock once and it will open you see the thing about relationship is that because of what you are looking for sometimes it will have to sting your ego don't be embarrassed pay the price that's the price for the value you are looking for i see a number of men of god sometimes they want to see me maybe for a meeting and they come once twice and say please what is the big deal about this one please we are all equal before god and i say what an unwise person i have pursued men with anointings i have humbled myself i have stayed for weeks and months just to encounter people and the encounter was not more than two minutes because of value i have pursued uncommon mentors i have spent money i have sown seeds i still sow seeds into the lives of people to maintain relationship what have you done that you are complaining there are people just to stand after service and be patient everybody's pulling their mouth it's too late apostle i need to see you specially um, um and i say look look I, I may not have all the time and then you see them frowning Abba, let's respect value no great man needs you you are the one who needs him so you must pay the price pay the price when i meet people who have what i look for i don't go as apostle joshua selman if it means me sweeping the office you've heard my testimony of when i wanted to take a trip to the u.s to go and scrub the toilet of charles and francis hunter i was not going there as colleagues i wanted to go and scrub their toilets for two weeks it paid me when they died and i didn't meet them relationships how do you travel to u.s to go and scrub toilet if you can you snap yourself scrubbing toilet and put on facebook and say it is the lord's doing most people who don't understand this will say look at how this person is disgracing himself never be embarrassed to invest in quality destiny relationships there are useless relationships that are going nowhere cut them this night i release the grace on you there are people who are going nowhere and they are forcing you you come around them you don't love god you don't think you don't plan you don't do nothing and they say two weeks you've not leave them all love is a command relationship is not choose your friends it is within your power if you are not going where i'm going i love you but you have to stay we can greet in church we can greet around but you cannot be my destiny friend not having my convictions a man who has to make you change your conviction in his presence is not a destiny friend leave them who are you believing in right now that you have not seen anything in their life who are you believing right now some of these people some of them are outside they may be sitting smelly clothes they can't afford perfume torn clothes but they are receiving you can reject them because of the privilege that you have and tomorrow you did not know that that was your governor you were kicking away oh jerusalem jerusalem you did not know your time of visitation your time came 
and you allowed it to pass you we are going to cry to God tonight father I want to engage the law of relationship stand up please pray rise up on your feet I like you to thank God for this message we just started introducing it tonight lift your hands and thank God open your mouth and say God thank you you are revealing to me the keys 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 hallelujah let me tell you something come bigger many of you don't know this gentleman you see this guy this guy would never fail in life ask me why because when we started listen carefully when he and i started the time we used to meet in the campus and sit on his lap and this gentleman the same way he's holding his guitar that's how he was a person who was holding the guitar and playing and he would, everybody usually will be seated when it's time to preach but he will have to stand with me there's another dear lady she was the one who would hold light for me that's her work she did it joyfully bring her touch light every time i was going to read a scripture she would do it joyfully those two people will never never beg for bread not when i'm alive yes no 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 it's not amen this is a reality I'm serious about it. I can mention names of people. I told you about my principal who I went to visit early this year and I looked at him. He had become an old man now. And I said, God, in my lifetime, please let me build a house for this man and buy a car for him and bless him with a seed that brings tears from his eyes before he goes to me. It's a covenant I made with myself. What did he do? He believed in me. I remember seeing me as a young boy and he looked at me and said, you are smart. He had a little keyboard and he called me to come and sit down. And I had come from a background of so much complex and pain. He made the entire school to gather in front of me and he said I should play keyboard for them. And that was the beginning of the healing process for inferiority that today nations are getting blessed from. I was not born this way. Never forget those who believed in you when you were nothing. You see, let me tell you something about greatness. As you start rising, levels will change. Don't let your mind change. Because you will start seeing psychophants. People who you meet on the journey. And they are there to make it look like at your level. Should you now be relating with these ones? This woman used to sweep your house. Now you have become a big woman. You are even going to marry a millionaire. Just find 2,000 and let her go away. Please, this smelly woman, not your class. A wise person will say, if she could sweep my house when I had nothing, she deserves to sweep my palace. She even deserves a palace of her own. Relationships. Anything money can buy, relationship can buy it. You have been paying for too many things using finances. Start using relationships. Lift your voice and cry. Because God bless my love. Lift your voice and say, Lord, connect me. Connect me. Connect me. Pray. Connect me. Shato Salaka de Bregadia. Shepherd Salabakaria. I know our time is gone, but pray. I'm handing to you keys that will make your life remarkable. Man of God, pray for relationships. Strategic relationships. Covenant relationships. Pray. I like you to pray and say, Lord, take away the spirit of offense because offense is the killer of relationships. Hear me? Your friends will never be perfect people, just like you are not. There are many of you, your, your son, you can never have a friend for two weeks and not talk about A to B and talk about B to C. 
is a devilish attitude. I like you to pray and say, Lord, take that attitude out of my life. Bitterness on offense. Grace to forbear. Grace to endure the weaknesses of my destiny friends. Grace to endure the weaknesses of my valuable friends. Listen, Pastor Femi come. Many of you don't know why you see me stand with Pastor Femi. It's not just because Pastor Femi is my son in the gospel. Let me tell you. Do you know before he became a pastor, Pastor Femi used to be the one to carry equipment for Washington. This Washington you see. He was, he would carry the equipment and sit down in Rema Chapel. They would finish Riazal. He would help to close and God was watching. God was watching. Foolish people were saying you are wasting time. Why are you human worship? And God was watching. God does not lift proud people. God lifts those who can serve with their heart and their life. Gradually, gradually, occasionally he would play bass guitar. Humble himself. Even when he became a pastor, there were times he was playing bass guitar. One day I had to tell him, no, it's okay. The person assisting him now, Francis. Francis is a friend of Charles. Francis was in protocol. Look at how God is lifting people except you. God is lifting people except you because pride has still kept you where you are. Big money sin. There are people who humble themselves to serve. There are people in this ministry. The level of grace they have, they can be geos of great ministries. Yet you see them doing very frail activities. Some of them are in protocol, running around. He resisted the proud. He gives grace to the humble. You see what God has done in his life today. God bless you. Aaron, come. Let me give you. Come, Aaron. Many of you do not know that the first person who was the protocol of UNI was Aaron. This gentleman you see standing here. When we were doing crusades, nothing to write home about. Owing everybody everywhere. Just moving by faith. It was Aaron who was in charge of logistics and buses. I remember shouting at them and pushing them and all of these things. This guy you see, Aaron. Yet till today, the way he is, you still see him greet some of the leaders. Some of these people are young. They are younger than him by far in age, younger than him in experience and all of that. And you see him still act and where there is an opportunity, you see him serve with all his heart. Aaron is one person who has served me and served God with his life. And I've made a vow and a covenant, no matter what happens, I will never watch him and his children beg for bread. Thank you, Aaron. I love you. Question. A few years from now, who is going to call you? Do you know a Jimmy's wife, this lady you see? As of 2010, she was a member of protocol. Protocol, when we're doing Kingdom Well Summit. Had not married her husband yet. Protocol. Serving with all her heart. Establishing quality relationships. Today, look at their children. All copying what the parents are doing. You are allowing time to pass. God is sending strategic people to your life. You insult everybody who is not you. You are out to look for imperfections. This lady is too loud. This person is too this. It is true they have those issues. But can you ignore it and see that God is connecting you with a ladder that will wipe your tears forever? Our parents ignored it. And today they keep frowning at televisions when they see their colleagues. Pray in one minute. Open my eyes to see those who are my destiny helpers. Open my eyes to see the relationship I must protect at all costs. Open my eyes, oh God, to see the relationship. Not all relationships are worth keeping. Not all.
to invest in profitable relationships in the name of Jesus Christ I pray that you will have at least two to three valuable people in your life that you can call friends in me. And I declare and declare that every wrong attitude that you have portrayed that has driven great people from your life, I declare a restoration for you tonight. In the name of Jesus, I command a reconnection for you with the great and valuable people who will lift you to the next level. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Put your hands together for Jesus and please keep standing. Please keep standing. Please keep standing. Our time is gone, but I just want to perform two functions very quickly. Number one, I want to make an altar call. Why do we do this every time? We do this because there is somebody who needs to have a relationship with Jesus. We are talking about the law of relationships. There are some of you outside. The first relationship you need a connection with and two is Jesus Christ. You will never succeed in life outside of him. You may have been coming around. Some of you are outside. Some of you are online. Some of you were invited. You heard me speak. You are hearing me speak again. And the Lord is telling you, I need a relationship with you. I want to build your life. Some of you need a reconnection. That connectivity has been broken. Wherever you are, please, I will count one to four very quickly. Don't wait for anybody to come. Take a bold step and make your way out here right now. One, quickly, please appreciate them as they come. I believe there are people here and there. If you are coming, please come. God bless you. God bless you. Bless you. Please run and come. Two, I'm counting one to four. God bless you. God bless you. You can stand on your feet, please. Those outside, keep coming. Nothing to be ashamed of. It's a reconnection. Man of God, I need this relationship. I don't want my life to be a failure. He said, he who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Keep coming. Three. God bless you. Don't be ashamed of him. He's the friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for your courage. If you're coming, still join them quickly. Quickly, I see people coming. Our mother is coming. God bless you, Mama. Please come and join them quickly. Let's appreciate our mother. God bless you. Bless you. Now, I want you to lift your right hand, all of you in front. Lift your right hand and mean it seriously. We're out of time, but then don't make a joke of it. It's a supernatural experience. Say in the name of Jesus, tonight, I declare that my heart belongs to Jesus. I surrender to you totally, completely. I ask that my sins be forgiven. See, the power of God is even on you as you are praying. I receive the life of God right now. And I declare that I'm a child of God from today. My sins are forgiven. I have a new beginning. I declare that I'm reconnected back to the source of my life, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Father, receive these ones. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will take them from glory to glory in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that you honor their decisions and I pray, oh God, that this will be forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you so much for coming. There's a gentleman waving his hands. All of you are likely to just move in concert and you will meet him. They will direct you, give you a few details and communicate a few things. Let's honor them very quickly.